competitions by a 20 to 0 vote. Athletes in NAIA will now only be allowed to compete in women's sports if they were assigned the female gender at birth. One final test for Connecticut in its and, and it, when it faces Purdue in tonight's men's national title game, Huskies haven't lost an NCAA tourney game since March 17th of 2022. They're 5-0 and in national championship games, and they are seeking a second straight title. ESPN college basketball analyst Seth Greenberg. UConn is the most complete team. Even might have bigger numbers than Klingon, but it's the collective responsibility of this Connecticut team that makes them just different, and it starts with their ability to defend the ball and that's all about Stephen Castle. The game's going to be won in the backcourt and ball pressure as opposed to what everyone thinks, the battle up front. ESPN's Jeff Borzella, Pete Thamel report. Kentucky's John Calipari expected at some point today to complete a five-year deal to become the next coach at Arkansas. Feeling great starts with a great shave, and great shaves start with Barbasol Shaving Cream. That's Barbasol Shaving Cream. An American classic for over 100 years. Close Shave America. Close Shave Barbasol. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. That's right. <laughs> And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you sir. And Mr. Toby Tom play. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Tiger baseball takes it on the chin. John Calipari switching schools in the SEC. Luch in hour three. Saints welcoming in a wide receiver draft target. We got a ton to do, but let us begin as we do every single day. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. All right, Saturday morning, uh, LSU had a full-scale practice out on the Ponderosa as they get closer to the uh, football spring game, and they were very kind to invite the media to attend the entirety of the practice. So I was out there, got out there, uh, let us in about 10 a.m. and went till about 12.30, so two and a half hours. Got some sun, as you might be able to tell. And uh, forgot the sunscreen. Don't be deceived. When it's 67 degrees outside and sunny, you can still get burned. Um but I figured, let me, I took a lot of notes, copious notes, and I figured, let me run through some of this and uh, kind of give you a sense of, of what I saw, what my takeaways were. So the way they structured is they had a team period, then they went to, or excuse me, they had an individual period, went to a scrimmage, more individual, wrapped with a scrimmage. And the scrimmage was basically ones on ones, twos on twos, and so on. I could tell you, bore you with a lot of the individual period stuff, but it's a lot of like, you know, hitting tackling dummies and pushing sleds and catching balls against air, and there's just not a lot to say. The scrimmage portions, though, were interesting because you started to get a sense of, okay, who's running where and what units in particular maybe seem to be standing out. So let me just kind of run through, if I could, the results of the scrimmage and kind of the structure, and I'll tell you my takeaways. So, the first scrimmage period that we saw, they went five plays of ones-on-ones, five plays of twos-on-twos, then back to five plays of ones-on-ones, and then the twos again. Um, I thought, we all know what the starting offense is going to be at this point, um, it, at least as they're running it right now. Your starting offensive line is set, Nussmeyer's the quarterback, Mason Taylor's your tight end, and your first three wide receivers are Kyron Lacey, Taylor! Kyron Lacey, Chris Hilton, and uh, Aaron Anderson. So that's, that's your first offense. It was interesting defensively to see what they were going to do, especially at the line of scrimmage. So your, into, your starters on the interior were Jacoby and Guillory and Jalen Lee. Uh, at right end was Braden Swinson. At left end was uh, Savion Jones. Of course, Greg Penn and Harold Perkins were your inside backers. Your starting corners at right corner 
was Ashton Stamps at left corner was true freshman P.J. Woodland. Now, during the one reps, they did rotate, and the next two up were Javen Toviano and J.K. Johnson. We've been waiting to see J.K. Johnson. Remember, the Ohio State transfer was injured in fall camp last year, missed the entire season. He did uh, rotate in. He's wearing number 12 now. He was 10 last year. He's wearing number 12, and he did rotate in with the ones. Um, and then your safeties were Jordan Gilbert and Sage Ryan. Worth noting earlier in the practice, Sage Ryan went into the medical tent. He had a little ankle thing. And they just taped him up, and he, he returned and, and practiced the rest of the way. So all good there. Um, this was the sequence of plays for the starters. They threw a 50. Nussmeyer first play, rolls right, 15 yards, Kyra Lacey on the sideline. Boom. Second play, they run a screen to Xavion uh, Thomas. That became a theme. They like Xavion Thomas in the screen game a lot. They threw a middle screen. Intended for Caleb Jackson. Harold Perkins with the pass breakup. Very nice coverage over the middle by Perkins. The next two plays, they went right up the gut. And this is where you could say, okay, should we be really excited about the offensive line or really worried about the defensive line? Because Josh Williams took a handoff up the middle and didn't get touched. That was a thud, so they weren't tackling to the ground. But I'm telling you, nobody would have had a chance to tackle him until he got into the secondary. And then the next play, the fifth play, Caleb Jackson took a, a delayed handoff up the middle and didn't get touched until he was eight yards downfield. I think LSU's – this is maybe my first biggest takeaway. LSU's offensive line is awesome. That, that shouldn't come as any surprise. You've got two four-year starters at guard. You've got bookend tackles that are probably going to be first-round picks next year. According, you know, They stay healthy and according, everything goes according to plan. And they love D.J. Chester. As a matter of fact, after the scrimmage, Brian Kelly – do you have this one? Brian Kelly talked about D.J. Chester – do um, you have that one? Please play this. Listen to Brian Kelly talking about what, was, what impressed him about DJ Chester. What we were looking for at that position, and we knew that we were going to be inserting a younger player with veterans, was somebody that was mature and, and handled himself in, in, in that manner. He is all business. He handles himself in a very professional manner. He takes care of business off the field. You know, if he if he's walking around here and he's interacting, you'd think he's a junior or a senior. His demeanor is a lot different than a young player. And we needed to vet that out in the recruiting process because if we were going to handle it that way uh, or hand it over to him, we needed somebody. And that's what I look for in the center position. That was awesome. The first team offensive line was great. Now, if you want a reason for optimism on the defensive side, it was what happened after that. Because with the twos and the threes, the defense won the day. Here was, here was the five, the, in the first part of the stream, was a five-play sequence that we saw with the twos. A.J. Swan went with the twos first, and in the next series, uh, Ricky Collins went with the twos. Here was your sequence. They run the ball, short gain, fumble a shotgun snap, another short run, a short draw, and then they ran it again for a short game. The second defensive unit stacked up that offensive line. Now, you've got Deshaun Womack and Paris Shand running with the twos. In this sequence, Kimo Makaneoli was running with the twos along with Sean Washington, the Juco transfer. Your twos at the Weeks brothers were your linebackers. Your twos on defense, the front seven, far outperformed your offense. That's, that's reason to believe, okay, as you get further down the depth chart and as you look forward to next year, they're coming. In some of the individual drills, I know we're not going to talk a bunch about that, but Gabe Relaford ha had a huge win against Tyree Adams, who's the number two left tackle right now. Gabe Relaford's an early enrollee end. They got some good young talent there. That's a reason to be excited. Um, when the ones went back in, the big play was... Nussmeyer rolling his right, hit Mason Taylor about 20 yards downfield. Mason Taylor! And then on the next play, rolled left and hit uh, Kyron Lacey on the sideline. And that, I would say, aside from the line of scrimmage, my biggest takeaway from this weekend, from Saturday's scrimmage, is y'all, Kyron Lacey took over that practice. Um, on the second team period that we got to watch, right, whenever they went into the scrimmage. When the ones went out, this was the sequence of plays. On first down, and this this is a reason for optimism here, 
Brayden Swinson beat Emory Jones and sacked Nussmeyer on first down. So they got second and 17. By the way, the scrimmage was set up like you start at the 25. They got chain, your chain gang. Coaches aren't on the field. Uh, there's no clock, but refs are out there. I mean, it is a like a scrimmage. First down, you get sacked, lose about seven yards. It's second and 17. They run a, a screen to Kyron Lacey. He gets the sack yardage back. It's third and 10. Nussmeyer throws the Kyron Lacey left side of the formation. It's low and away. Lacey goes down to a knee and away from his body, catches the ball at the sticks first down. On first down, defense is offside. Nuss has a free play, takes a deep shot to Chris Hilton, incomplete. So it's first and five. They run a uh, a shallow crosser to a C.J. Daniels, which was incomplete. Second and five. Nussmeyer looks left. Kyron Lacey high points a ball about 30 yards downfield in double coverage. The two defenders fall down. Lacey takes off all the way down about the five-yard line. And then on first and goal from the five, the C's part, Nussmeyer runs right in for a touchdown. You overcame a sack on first down because of Kyron Lacey being a freak. It may be that your secondary isn't any good again. Or it may be that guy is ready, like really ready, to be the next stud. And that was super impressive. Um, but again, when the twos went out there, and this time Ricky Collins was was first up with the twos, first play, Parashan beats Bo Bordelong, sack. Second play on second and 20, get about a three-yard run with Caleb Jackson. It's third and 17. They pressure Ricky Collins, incomplete pass over the middle. Your second defense was better than your second offense. Your starters on offense, your first team offense, is super impressive. So I think we all expect it, right? The offense, they're they're not going to be the best offense in college football again, like they were this past year. But they're still going to be really, really good. I mean, you can just see it. They ooze talent everywhere. The offensive line might be the best offensive line in football. You've got a fourth-year quarterback. You've got receiving talent for days. Like, you're going to be fine offensively. How much better can your defense get between now and September or Labor Day weekend and then carry throughout the season than they were a year ago? I'll say it a million more times before the start of the season. I don't need you to be a top 10 defense in the country. I just need you not to be the worst defense in program history. This offense is going to score 30 a game. They must score 35 a game. Can you not give up 40 in three games that really matter? That's going to be the onus for this defense. How much better can they get? But it was uh, it was good to see out there, man. Uh, Brian Kelly had a lot to say after practice. We'll delve into that sort of periodically as we move uh, move throughout the show. But a lot to like from what we saw from the Tigers on Saturday. All right, let me knock out a quick break, y'all. Our show open every day is brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy in Louisiana with a great taste of Bud Light. Bud Light, of course, the official beer of the LSU Tigers. So if you're out at the box, if you're at Tiger Park, if you're at the PMAC Tiger Stadium, or in your favorite recliner at home cheering on the Tigers, make sure you got plenty of ice-cold Bud Light. Love our friends over at Mockler Beverage. They've been great partners of ours, great partners of the Tigers and our community for decades. And not just here in Baton Rouge. they got, of course, their home office. They just opened up their uh, Southwest Louisiana distributorship there where we were a few weeks ago in Lake Charles. Uh, awesome people. Proud to go to bat for my friends at Mockler every single day. Make sure you drink with the champs and the great taste of Bud Light. Okay, let me knock out a quick break, y'all. We'll come back. Uh, we do want to talk some LSU baseball. And instead of me sort of uh, droning on about all that ails this team, I figured... Let's get someone on who's been through it. Uh, former Tiger national champ Mikey Matuk is going to join us next. Of course, won a national championship in 09 and then struggled in 2010. Mikey didn't struggle personally. He was fantastic. But went through the team struggles in 2010 and 2011. Want to talk about that and how you, what he sees from this team and can they work through it? Mikey Matuk joins us next. It's AFR. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's.com, Rouse's.com. Y'all get on by Rouse's. Maybe you're looking for dinner plans tonight. You don't feel like cooking after the long weekend. Don't eat those leftovers. Swing on into Rouse's. They got great dinner options for the whole family. If you want to grab and go, some hot and boiled, uh, their kiosks. They got sushi already made. Or if you want to throw something on the grill, if it's from their, their butcher, some steaks, whatever it may be, or their seafood market, they got you covered over at Rouse's. And every single day, they got hot and boiled seafood, crawfish, shrimp, crabs, corn, potatoes, all of it, grab and go, bag, tag, ready to roll. It's at Rouse's. Hey, I want to remind you, when you go to Rouse's.com or on the app, you'll see the weekly specials. You can tap that tab and see all. So if you're making groceries, you want to save, they'll have all their discounted op items right there 
at the website. So go to Rouse's.com or download the Rouse's app. Rouse's.com. Rouse's.com, official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's. This feels like home. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Rack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Brack, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you, our mobile... After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. So you thought your guys competed today? No, I, I know they don't. I, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. They have to answer that question individually. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to answer that question. That's that's for each of them individually to answer. Woo! Tigers are three and nine through twelve games. Uh. Muse was doing some research. Uh, Muse, to the best of your knowledge, first time ever that you can find? Well, maybe not ever. Let's say as far Mo back as... Modern era. Because, I mean, when I went back before Skip was here, they played some, like, two-game series. So, in the modern era of them playing three-game conference weekends is the first time I found that LSU has lost their first four. Woo! Mm. Um, I could talk about all the challenges... But I figured there's a way better way. You've, you've heard it all. There's a way better way to approach this. And I wanted to talk to somebody who's been through this and how they got through it. Uh, look, Mikey Matuk's an all-time LSU great. First-round draft pick. has been a great friend of the show for a lot of years. Was a national champion in 09. And then 2010 and 2011, there were struggles. And Mikey was on those teams. So Mikey's good enough to join us now. How are you, dude? I'm good, man. How are you? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that I'm joining y'all because I've had to struggle after, well, after winning, but, you know, part of it. Well, let's be very clear. Uh, 
you individually didn't struggle, okay? Well, uh, uh, the, the team did. And there, there are some synergies. And whenever you and I were texting earlier, you know, Mikey, the example that I kind of gave was 2011 because of all the close losses. That team lost seven SEC games by their one or two runs. Um, but you actually said you saw more synergies with the 2010 team. Why? Uh, 2010 came after a national championship, you know, and we had a lot of guys coming back that were big parts of the national championship. We lost a lot of key parts. Uh, I think the big thing that we lost was a lot of the veteran leadership, a lot of the guys who had been there for four or five years. And I see a lot of similarities in this team because they lost a lot of four or five year guys that, you know, may not play one inning in the big leagues, but were huge contributors to the team and were great college baseball players, you know? And so uh, we lost a lot of those guys. After that 09 season, I feel like they've lost a lot, lost a lot of those guys after the 23 season. Mike, you know the interesting thing about 10 as well um, is you all in 2010, you all started off yeah. pretty hot, and then it then it kind of got bumpy in conference play. What do you remember about like walk me through that dynamic, Mike? Of what it's like where you know, look, I mean, 2010 was. I mean, you were there. Renato was there. Like you still had. A lot of talent, like this team, but the wins just weren't coming at the start of conference play. What, what was that like? What's it like going through that? So, and that's another similarity. So, we 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 were thirty two and six, ranked number one in the country in twenty ten, and we're eleven and four in conference. So that's kind of where it was a little different. We started off hot in conference. So our first fifteen games were almost completely opposite of what's going on with them right now. And then we kind of went through our struggles. We lost three. Extremely close games to Ole Miss on the road, which really all three of those games could have gone our way. We got hit to two home runs in the bottom of the eighth inning, two straight days to take the lead over us. And then we lose at home to UNO, midweek game, four straight. And then we go on the road to a Florida Gators team that had three uh, you know, elite pitching, pitchers and a team that was really good. They ended up winning the conference that year, and then they swept us on the road. So that's seven straight. That's six straight SEC losses that we had after starting 11 and four. And for us, it was, it was a matter of, okay, what was going wrong? It was, it wasn't about the offense. It was more about not being able to, to sustain the, the pitching depth and being able to get out. And uh, I kind of see a little bit of that on this year's team. Now this year's team's got more talent in the bullpen uh, than we had that year, but, you know, I, I see a lot of some. You don't have a stopper right now. You don't have a guy uh, in the rotation to say, okay, hey, we're going to go out there and we're going to, no matter what, we're going to get the win. In 2009, we had that with Coleman and Renato, but more so Coleman because it was Lewis Coleman. Mm -hmm. And then in 2010, when Anthony got hurt, we didn't really have that, and we were trying to try to figure it out, and we were giving up a ton of runs. Uh, Mikey Matuk is our guest. Um, you know, 11 um – 11 felt feels similar as well, right? Yep. Now, it was, yep. it was different, Mikey, because, look, Gosman was a freshman that year, and, and I, you got the sense, you know, I remember talking to Paul. It was also the first year they did in the bats. But yeah. they, they didn't, they didn't want to run Gosman as a freshman out there on Friday nights. And right. so Kurt McCune became the Friday night guy, and Gosman you know, got better and better and better as the season went along. As you were going through that in 2011 – Kind of like it's going now. Was there a point where you felt like it was going to get better? Uh, it, I, I did because we had – so you talk about Gauls and me and a freshman. We started that season with three freshmen in the rotation. Yeah, We had Kurt McCune as a Friday night guy, Gaussman as a Saturday night guy, and Ryan Eads as a Sunday night guy. All super talented. All really good, but all really young. Right? Matty Ott was a junior. He was going to be the closer – you had Ben Alsop, who was going to be kind of that swing guy if you needed him to be. Yeah. Um, but our offense was very young. We had talent, but we were young. Me, Mason, and Rafe were kind of the most – in the handover and Nola, but those were the experienced guys. But you didn't really have – you had Jacoby was coming up as a freshman. You had Ty Ross as a freshman behind the plate. You had some other guys you were trying to fill in. And I think that was – you didn't have guys that understood or really knew at that point how to win those close games. Because you mentioned earlier, we lost, what was it, seven, six, seven, eight games that by one or two runs in the SEC that year. Yeah. 
And it wasn't that we weren't talented, similar to this team. It was just we nobody really knew how to win those close games until you started to. And at the end of that year, we kind of we went on this big run. And had we won the one game that we lost in Mississippi State by one run, we would have made the SEC tournament by winning 14 out of the last 50, or I think 11 out of the last 12 SEC games. So, so that, no, I'm sorry. Go you ahead, could please. Feel, you, you could feel you could feel the momentum turning once you started winning a couple games. The young guys start to kind of figure it out, uh, but it takes repetition, and that's the one thing that you know you're getting a lot of turnover in the lineups. And I don't know if these young guys are going to be able to get that or get in that repetition. Is how, so you mentioned some of the youth, Mikey. Maybe one of the Mikey Matuks, I guess. Maybe one of the differences here is yes, there's youth, but there's also the dynamic of transfers, right? Like. Yep. Braswell is playing the key role for you right now. A guy like Mac Bingham, who's a veteran player, but is is new here. I mean, two thirds of your ro- actually your entire rotation are all transfers. Although, of course, Hurd was here last year. Does the dynamic change because it's not necessarily young guys? It's just, but it's it's transfers. Yeah, I mean, look, you're playing in the SEC and you're getting transfers. Uh, Braswell came from South Carolina, so let's take him out of it. But some of the guys on the mound, they're transferring in from schools that had. They don't get. They don't. They don't see what they see in the SEC. You don't get the twelve thousand. You don't get the competition day in and day out. So yeah, you're going to get these guys that come in that they think they know what to expect, and then you get there and it's like, well, this is a little different than I even thought. And t- take talent out of it because you can be the most talented guy in the world if you're not able to handle it or expecting what what you're what what if you don't know what to expect when you're on the mound, then you know things get a little tighter. You know, you don't, the ball doesn't really come out as crisp or as, as clean as it had in the bullpen or in scrimmages. And until you kind of get used to that, and until you put yourself in a position where you're like, all right, you know, I understand what to expect. I know what's going on. I know what I need to do. You know, you're going to have to, it, it, you're going to have some struggles. And that's kind of what, that's what I see right now is these guys going out there, they don't really know their role yet. And they're trying to figure it out. And once you start losing and you're not having that success over and over again, it starts getting in your in your head, and you're just like, "Well, what else do I need to do?" You need to try harder and try harder. And in baseball, the harder you try, the worse you get. Mm. Mikey, do you think look, Jay has has tinkered a lot, right? Um, yeah. With the lineup, as a hitter or as as a position player, would I, well, I think I know the answer. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, you want to be in the lineup every day, but. What what is maybe the benefit of being in the lineup every day as opposed to the the benefit of trying to find a matchup that day? Like obviously on yeah. Sunday or Saturday they went they went heavy right handed handed with the lineup to go against the lefty. So like what's what do you think is from a player's perspective maybe the benefit as opposed to the the drawback of um of tinkering like that? Yeah, look, and I'm gonna preface this by saying I'm not in the clubhouse. I don't know kind of what's going on behind the scenes. Jay's been doing this a lot. I've never coached in my life. So right. I'll preface it by saying that. But as a player, the more at-bats I got, the more comfortable I felt. And if I know that I'm going out there and I'm not gonna, if I don't get a hit or two hits or get on base a few times and I'm coming out the next day, those at-bats are magnified, especially for young guys, because they want to play. They came, they came to the school that they're going to because they said, oh, I want to play here and I want to be able to – show that I can make it to the, get to the next level and help us win games while I'm here. It's hard to do that when they're on the bench. And when they get the opportunity, they want to stay in there. So if they, don't, if they know, okay, if I don't get a hit, I'm out, mm. those have bats are magnified. Now, that's a, that, that changes over time. As the older you get, the more mature you get. But that's not the dynamic of the team right now. So as a, as a hitter specifically, the more pitches I see, the more at bats I have, the better I feel and the more comfortable I feel. Kling looks a lot better at the plate this weekend. I think the more at-bats he gets after some of those doubles he hit this weekend, I think he's going to be better. Larson has looked great, you know, and I think he's kind of earned his way into getting more at-bats. But the mixing and matching, I understand it in a sense. But some, it's, it's some, at some point you realize, okay, well, it's not, we're not as efficient as we I hoped we would be. Maybe you pick your top 10, 11 guys and say, I'm running with you guys for the rest of the year until something else changes. Mm. A couple more minutes here with Mikey Matzo, of course, former Tiger great. Catch up, uh, mic'd up with uh, Mikey. And, get, and you got Jay Mitch with you too, right? Yep, yep. yep. Jay Mitch is my co-host. Um, are y'all going to be on today? We are going to be on tonight. What time? Eight, 6 to 8 p.m. 6 to 8 p.m. 
on the Miked Up YouTube channel. I'll pull it up here for those who, uh, if you're not familiar with the channel, go subscribe up. You catch Mikey and Jay, Jared Mitchell, of course. Uh, Miked Up with Mikey Matuk, Jared Mitchell. Um, Mikey, maybe I'm burying the lead here. Maybe this is the first question I should have asked you, which is, like, can they fix it this year? I, I think so. I mean, you look at what happened last weekend. Missouri swept Florida. <laughs> now, granted, I know Florida's record's not great. Missouri is 1-8 in conference. Their only one up to that point was against a red-hot Kentucky team. And then they go and sweep a Florida team who's got probably big leaguers all over the field. Probably the, maybe the best player in college baseball on the field, and they get swept. Right? So baseball is a very finicky game. It's very, you know, it, it's so up and down. And it, it, in an instant, the momentum can shift. And I think... Like LSU, I'll take out the three Sunday turn around rule games. Like that, those are kind of, I don't really know what to say about those, to be honest with you. That's kind of, that kind of, that, those are the most mind boggling games I've seen all year. But other than that, they've been in every single game. And so it takes one or two of these games to go the other way and to flip, right? And you kind of felt like it was happening on that Friday or uh, the Thursday game last week. They won the game, it looks really good. You felt like they were going to try to give it away. They scored nine runs early, then it was 9-6, and then all of a sudden Griffin Herring comes in, stops it. There's the stopper. And then you end up putting that one insurance run on. You felt like once you did that, the momentum was gone. Yeah. Then you fast forward to the next game on Friday, and it's back and forth, back and forth. LSU's at home. They get the lead. You feel like they, okay, you, you get out of this one inning, you feel like they have a chance to go at an insurance run. They give up the opposite field home run to take, uh, you know, the, uh, to for Vanderbilt to take the one run lead. And to me, that's what you're missing. You don't have you. Don't, you need to stop the momentum and continue the momentum of scoring runs. And we haven't been able to do that. We've been very good at that two years. The last two years. This year, you feel like it's going the opposite direction. So, long winded answer to your question is yes. I do think this thing is fixable. I don't think it has anything to do with talent. If it was a talent issue, I'll sit here and tell you, Matt, they're just not good. But that is not the case. Yeah. Like they are good. They are super talented. They have the guys on the team. It's just a matter of allowing these guys or forcing these guys to believe like, hey, this shit's not oh so I can't do that on the radio. I'm sorry. No, you're this stuff this stuff is not going to continue all year. Like, this is something that we're just getting. We have to. We have to get through this. You haven't even gotten halfway through the SEC yet. It doesn't look good now, but you got 17 games or how many games? 18 games left in conference. And as bad as we've been, we can flip it and be as good that good on the last 18 games. So yes, I do think it's fixable. Uh, Mikey Matuk, go check him out. YouTube podcast, Mike'd up with Mikey Matuk. He and uh, Jay Mitch will be on tonight. Actually, right when we're done at six. Uh, so six to eight. Man, uh, appreciate the time and the perspective as always. Uh, we'll catch up again soon. Thanks as always, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. Be well, uh, Mikey Matuk. It's an interesting perspective, man. It won a national championship and went through some of this the next two years uh, for, of course, being a first-round draft pick and, and uh, having a long big league career. But um, it's one thing if, if I say, I mean, they have the talent to fix it and it's doable it it's another one when mikey says it he just has infinite infinitely more credibility than i do in this conversation so i'm glad to hear him say it um and all the outside validating factors are there it's just like can they go do it god it feels like they just desperately need something good to happen just harder and harder to see where that's going to come from right now okay uh we'll go around the sec next it's afr presented by relief windows afr man i love telling you about glow resources Awesome, awesome company. Jareth Nockan and the great crew over at Glow Resources. They are complete employer solutions, as they say. It's not employee. They're not a, a temp staffing agency. They want to be your first call. When you're going to hire, instead of you know running through the rat race with the hiring market being so bad, start with Glow. Work with Glow Resources. They're a permanent solution. They do they don't lose customers. They take the headache out of the hiring process. You, know, you will select from a pre-qualified batch of candidates. So if you're tired of experimenting, stop experimenting. Stop going the cheapest route. Stop wasting money on training and effort. Do it right the first time. In the long term, that'll be a cost-saving solution. It's Glow Resources. You need help in hiring. Skilled blue-collar or white-collar labor. 
Glow Resources can help. G-L-O, glowresources.com. your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge and the Baton Rouge Clinic bring you the Dreams Come True Radiothon. Dreams Come True is an organization designed to help grant dreams for children with life-threatening illnesses and their families. The Dreams Come True Radiothon is presented today by Mystery Electric, Goodwood Men's Clinic, and Shaw Bills. Donate today at 104.5 ESPN.com. Big, big, big congrats to Simone Augustus, uh, the most decorated. You know, I, I would say Simone is the most decorated female athlete in LSU history. She might be the most decorated athlete in LSU history. She had just been elected earlier this year to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, on uh, Saturday, she became the first uh, wom LSU women's basketball alumnus to be elected to the Naismith Basketball Hall. Hall of Fame. So she's like not only in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, but in the Naismith Hall of Fame. Here was Simone Augustus um, after the announcement on her election. It means so much. Um, obviously, just to be a trailblazer of the game, see the game where it's at now, the elevation of it, the visibility of it. Um, and also just for the people that I went on this journey with, it's been a long, hard journey, but a very gratifying journey now that you know, it's been uh, stamped with a Hall of Fame nomination and then going into the Hall this year in 2024. It's just an amazing journey, a career uh, that it ended with a cherry on top. She is the first uh, LSU women's basketball player 
to go into the Naismith Hall of Fame. A Sue Gunter, Van Chancellor, Kim Mulkey, all in the Naismith Hall of Fame. A Shaq, Bob Pettit, Pete Maravich on the men's side. So with LSU ties, Simone Augustus now becomes the seventh um, uh, person with LSU basketball ties to go into the Naismith Hall of Fame. The enshrinement will take place in August, the 16th and the 17th. I mean, Simone was two-time National Player of the Year, two-time SEC Player of the Year, three-time first-team All-American, uh, first female student-athlete to have her jersey retired. She was the number one pick in the WNBA draft. She won four championships. She was a finals MVP. Um, she is in the top 10 all-time in the WNBA in scoring. She won three Olympic gold medals. So I'll say it again. I don't even know that it's fair to say Simone is the most decorated female athlete in LSU history. She, I, I mean, she is most probably the most decorated athlete in, in LSU basketball history. Uh, congrats to Simone Augustus, uh, the greatest of all time in LSU women's basketball on her uh, election to the Naismith Hall of Fame. Okay, it is After Further Review. We're brought to you by Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Michelle.com, Michelle.com. You can check them out online, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-I, Michelle.com. If you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products you use to weigh and measure. And I always tell you, make sure you follow Michelle on LinkedIn. They do uh, an awesome job of keeping up with their content on LinkedIn, a lot of uh, testimonials. I mean, literally, I just opened up my LinkedIn. The first thing up there is this was six hours ago. It's um, an industry spotlight on transportation and logistics and how uh, what they do for their clients in those sectors. So Michelle Weighing and Measurement, follow them on LinkedIn or go online at michelle.com, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-I, michelle.com. Uh, ISO 17025 accreditation. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement, Michelle.com. Okay, uh, we do it every day about this time. Let's go around the SEC. Around the SEC, bringing you the biggest news from the nation's best conference, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Of course, we know Arkansas is prepared to hire John Calipari as its new coach. An Arkansas redshirt sophomore forward, Trevon Brazil, is entering the NBA draft. He will not return to Arkansas. 6'10", 220. He transferred to Arkansas from Missouri after his freshman season. Tore his ACL a year ago. Played just 35 career games. He was viewed as a potential lottery pick before his injury. The Kentucky Wildcats. Five-star McDonald's All-American small forward, Carter Knox, reportedly considering reopening his college recruitment following John Calipari's department for Arkansas. Yet to sign his letter of intent with Kentucky. Knox uh, ranked the 19th best player in the class. When he committed to Kentucky, it was over Louisville, South Florida, the G League, and overtime elite. The Florida Gators. Guard Walter Clayton says he'll return to Gainesville for his senior year, but is entering the NBA draft to test those waters. He's a transfer from Iona. Clayton, this past year, had the fifth highest single season total in Florida scoring history. 33 points in their NCAA tournament loss to Colorado. The Tennessee Volunteers. DJ Jefferson has entered the transfer portal. He's leaving Tennessee basketball after two seasons. 6'5", 207-pound guard. Never really gained a role with the Vols in two seasons. He was a former four-star prospect. The Vols now have four open scholarships. Texas A&M! UCF defensive end transfer Josh Seliscar has verbally committed to Texas A&M over USC, Louisville, Minnesota, Duke, and Georgia Tech, 6'4", 265-pounder. Let me say that again. 6'4", 265 on the defensive line. Has one season of eligibility remaining. He played 50 games with 39 starts for the Golden Knights. The Missouri Tigers. And Mizzou got its first commitment of the 2025 recruiting class. It's quarterback Matt Zollers, a consensus four-star for 2025. He's out of Pennsylvania. Also had interest from Georgia, Bama, Penn State, Pittsburgh. Uh, on three, lists him as the third best quarterback in the country for 2025, but Rivals has him the 24th best quarterback for 2025, so a big variance there. 6'4", 205, again, the first commit for Missouri's 2025 class. All right, there you have it. That is around the SEC. We're glad to have you aboard with us here on this Monday edition of AFR, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, door siding, oh yeah? They now do indoor shutters as well. They're just the best. If you need windows, you need Relief Windows. All right, y'all, let me knock out a quick break. Uh, we'll come back, wrap up our number one. As I mentioned there and around the SEC, the massive story nationally today. We've got a lot of stuff we're going to get to, of course. Brian Kelly updating uh, the Trey Holly situation. Uh, David DeLucci's here in hour three. The Saints are hosting a wide receiver 
that they're potentially targeting in the draft, one of the risers here in this draft process. So we got a ton to get to, but the biggest story nationally today is John Calipari leaving Kentucky for Arkansas. Next hour, we're going to attack it from both sides. In 15 minutes, Wes Moore, who broke the news, uh, our buddy from uh, Little Rock is going to join us. And then at the bottom of next hour, about 45 minutes from right now, Jeff Drummond will join us from Lexington. Where do the Wildcats go from? What's the reaction there? Where do they go from here? We'll talk about that coming up next hour. Let me now get a quick break. Wrapping up hour number one next. AFR. If you are even thinking about selling your home, you need to call Darren James and you need to do it right now. 335-7666, or agent225.com. I'm not sure if you noticed, but here recently, interest rates have ticked down. And what that has done is it has mobilized buyers. And so you're starting to see inventory tick up in the market. So if you've been thinking about selling your home, I cannot stress enough the importance of calling Darren James now because the last thing you want to do is wait for the market to get flooded and then you're competing with other sellers. It's time. 335-7666, 335-7666. Beat the rush. You need to sell your home. You need Darren James. Agent225.com. Think real estate. Think Darren James. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Our revenue hour number one. Uh, it it never fails 
We are uh, less than three weeks away now from the start of the NFL draft. And as we get closer to the start of the NFL draft, you are going to hear and read about uh, uh, negative stories leaked about draft hopefuls. It happens every single year. Um, dilute sample at the combine, uh, bad locker room guy, all the stuff. This is when people start to leak these stories. And maybe it's agents of a of a of another player at a similar position trying to hurt the draft stock of someone that might elevate their client. Maybe it's a team that really likes a prospect, leaks the information, hoping they fall in the draft so they can get a discount. A lot of different ways. A lot of different reasons why this stuff happened. And yes, it happens that way. Um, but then inevitably, there's always knuckleheads who do stupid things on uh, the precipice of life-changing money and a life-changing moment and do things to cost themselves money. And unfortunately, that was the case for former Texas defensive tackle Tavondre Sweat, who is rated by everyone as the best nose tackle in this year's draft. Well, Tavondre, uh, Tavondre Sweat, uh, over the weekend, was arrested in Austin for DWI. He was uh, visibly spotted at the Texas-Oklahoma uh, softball game their Saturday evening, and then later that night, he around 2.12, um, actually, forgive me, this was Sunday at 2.12 p.m. Dude was driving drunk on a Sunday at 2.12 in the afternoon. Not 2.12 a.m., 2.12 p.m. I mean, I... It ju- it's another reminder that these are young people because young people do stupid things. When you were young, you did stupid things. When I was young, I did stupid things. I could talk about them here, and I would be very embarrassed to do so, but I could tell you about times when, yes, I, as a young, stupid person, drove when I shouldn't have. I, We've all been there. Not that it's any excuse. I just, I look at this, and I think now as, as a 41-year-old man, like, if I was on the verge of a life-changing moment, like Tavondre Sweat or anybody in this draft, I would lock myself in my house. I wouldn't go anywhere. I'd turn off my phone, unless it was an NFL team calling. Like, there's, I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't party. I wouldn't go to a friend's house. I would just sleep and work out and eat well and get myself ready for the draft. But it is hard to put context around that for some of these young guys. Anyway, Tavondre Sweat, we'll see how much that might affect. I mean, look, this guy was a... I mean, he was the Outland Trophy winner this year, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, and he just he's cost himself money. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll find out how much. By the way, as a reminder, we will be at uh, Don Juan for our draft party. Um, we've done it the past couple of years. It's been a great success, but a huge hit. We invite you to come on out. So again, the Thursday of the first round of the draft, our whole staff will be at Don Juan in Town Center. Come join us. And yes, unlike Tavondre Sweat, get an Uber. Get a designated driver. Please don't drive. And drink and drive. Be be responsible. Um, so I, I'll tell us about T Bob all the time. We always do whiskey and wine at Don Juan. T Bob never drives. He Ubers home every every week. Smart. That's what responsible humans should do. So Uber. But come join us. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. It's after further review. Um, glad to be hanging out with us here. We're brought to you by Pure Restoration. Pure Dash Restoration dot com. Kill mold. Remove odor. Have odor, have mold, think you might? Pure Restoration can help. It's so easy. I mean, they come in, they spray their patented non-toxic dry fog, and as soon as the fog dissipates, boom, you're back in your home, your office building, church, whatever it may be, free and clear, mold-free, healthy. It's affordable. It's uh, cost-effective. It's efficient. It's Pure Restoration. Pure-Restoration.com pure-restoration.com, or just message me, go, Scone, what's that mold thing you always talk about? Pure-restoration.com. Man, this was a a bombshell if you didn't see this last week. Uh, Voters in Missouri rejected an extension of a sales tax to help pay for Arrowhead Stadium renovations, and the mayor of Dallas is saying he would welcome the Chiefs back to Dallas. When they were in the AFL, they were the Dallas Texans before they moved to Kansas City to become the Chiefs. Um, and you say, well, that could never happen because of you know, Jerry Jones. I, the Dallas Cowboys, I think, would be just fine, even if there was another team in Dallas. They're the Dallas Cowboys. They're the most recognizable brand in North American sports and one of the most recognizable brands in the world. But I was looking at this earlier. Chiefs, The Chiefs released a study, the average annual economic impact of the Kansas City Chiefs on the region, and it's at $993.2 million. Just shy of a billion-dollar 
economic impact. It never ceases to amaze me, and we've been through this here before, but people who aren't sports fans don't look at sports teams as a business. They just think, I don't want to support the sports team. That It's no different than Louisiana giving tax credits to movie studios to create Hollywood South because you're bringing industry and jobs and attention and notoriety and an economy of scale to your state. It, it's mind-boggling that the people of Kansas City, Missouri can't understand that and <laughs> wouldn't have a small tax to keep that team there and keep thriving, create a billion-dollar economic impact. Stupid. Hour two next. AFR. AFR is brought to you by South Point Volkswagen, southpointvw.com. New and certified pre-owned in Baton Rouge and online at southpointvw.com. Hey, if you're in the market for a vehicle, new or certified pre-owned, look, maybe you love to drive something new. You know, that's something that you know I, I'm always comfortable in, you know, in having Erica and Drew in something new and safe and reliable that I know is going to be reliable and safe mostly, but also that's cost-effective and that she's going to love to drive. That's why we drive Volkswagens. You get all the style, the feel, the performance of luxury without the cost. Like right now, 0% APR for 60 months on Tiguan. That's the compact SUV. You want to buy a, a, maybe you're in a sedan, you want a compact SUV. Maybe you're looking to buy something safe for your child to drive their first vehicle. 0% for 60 months on Tiguan? It's time, y'all, to go to South Point Volkswagen, Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer. Airline just north of Highlander, SouthPointVW.com, South Point Volkswagen. What's your direction? Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SEA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. by sunshine whether you're working hard or playing hard our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com.
is SportsCenter. I'm Christine Lisi. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletes Council of Presidents approved a policy to ban transgender athletes from women's competitions by a 20 to 0 vote. Athletes in NAIA will now only be allowed to compete in women's sports if they were assigned the female gender at birth. Major coaching shakeup in college basketball. John Calipari at some point today expected to complete a contract to become the new coach at Arkansas. And after his 15-year tenure, Kentucky starts over, explains ESPN college basketball analyst Jay Williams. If you want to be older, if you want to go up for a guy like Scott Drew over at Baylor, if you want to try to pull Jay Wright out of retirement or a guy mm. like Billy Donovan with the Chicago Bulls, or if you want to go with a guy like Nate Oates, who is one of the hottest coaches in the country right now, literally at Alabama, who just took his team to the Final Four. With Calipari's looming exit, Kentucky's Aaron Bradshaw is the first to enter the transfer portal. Top 25 recruit Carter Knox, decommitted from the Wildcats, reopened his recruitment. A matchup of one seeds capping off March Madness tonight, defending champ Connecticut and Purdue in the men's national title game. Feeling great starts with a great shave, and great shaves start with Barbasol Shaving Cream. That's Barbasol Shaving Cream. An American classic for over 100 years. Close Shave America. Close Shave Barbasol. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from, from the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes of Baton Rouge Studios. studios. That's right. Number two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us, AFR, presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neal. They're chanting Paul O'Neal's name. Mm, you sue. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Um, the biggest story in the sporting world today is taking place in the Southeastern Conference, and it's not the fact that South Carolina won a, a women's basketball national championship. It's that John Calipari appears to be moving within the conference from Kentucky to Arkansas. The guy who broke the story was our buddy Wes Moore, who's uh, I saw it on Twitter yesterday. Uh, I mean, yesterday late afternoon early evening thereabouts and now everyone's on it and it appears that this is going to happen Westmore's good enough to give us a couple of minutes hey man how are you oh it's awesome it's a, it's a great day we survived the eclipse here in central Arkansas and all the people who came to Little Rock to watch the uh, total eclipse and now we uh, we got a new uh, basketball coach at Arkansas hey, so it, it's, a, it's a great time did you all have like the full eclipse there in Little Rock like it was good there yeah, total eclipse for like uh, three and a half minutes. Oh. Happened during my show, and we all got on our uh, remote equipment, walked outside, and did the broadcast outside for a couple minutes while the uh, total eclipse was happening. Pretty cool moment. Bigger story, John Calipari becoming the Hogs basketball coach or the eclipse there in Little Rock. By the way, it was just all it was in Baton Rouge was a cloudy day, Wes. I mean, it, it didn't – I mean, we, we got nothing. Oh, you missed out on it. No, I'm, it I'm cool. good, actually. I, 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 I'm fine. I was that way too, Matt, because, well, I work in the news, and so we've been talking about the eclipse and eclipse stories on the newscast every night for like six weeks, and I was just burnt out. I'm like, come on. It's it's the moon going across the sun. It's not that big of a deal. And so I walked outside, and I was like, oh, wow, well, this is pretty cool. And I put on my little eclipse glasses and looked up, and I was like, well, this is, I'm glad I did this. And then when the moon is fully over the sun, the total eclipse part, you can take off your glasses and look up at it. And uh, what, uh, Let me tell you real quick. What was really neat, Matt, the birds all started chirping and flying around. Then the geese, we're right on the river, the radio station is, and the geese started honking. They thought it was all, they thought it was like morning again. Mm. And it, so it threw off their clock. Oh, and they man. started moving around like it's the start of a new day. Had a, a guy call in said his cows all went to the barn because they thought it was morning time. It was time to eat again. So oh. it, was, it, was, it was neat. It was it was better than I thought it was going to be. Well, that's all the time we have. Wes Moore, thanks for joining us. <laughs> you bet. Have a great day, Matt. Talk to you later. 
Hey Wes, give us a uh, give us a timeline. When when did the uh, it was all we heard last week, right? It was like Chris Beard and uh, and Jung from uh, Kansas State. Like when did this actually start to materialize with Calipari? All right, so I got first win yesterday, right after church. I got a call about twelve fifteen, twelve thirty, and I just started going. I just started working on my contacts and asking around, but. Come to find out, talking to people who really are in the know, that are close to the situation, this all started like around Friday. So the beard, you know, I got to give Hunter your your check credit. You know, it wasn't just Chris Beard or Bud. He mm. was working different angles, and the John Calipari stuff, and thanks to, you know, the Tyson family and John Tyson, he is friends with Calipari. They have a relationship. Tyson has stepped up. He's going to help pay the salary. He's also donating to the NIL fund for basketball. He was a big part of getting this to happen with uh, Hunter Yurchek. So I'm, I'm convinced that all the talk started around Friday, and it really got serious Saturday. Word starts leaking out, and I find out on Sunday afternoon. Wes, why hasn't uh, this been officially announced yet? Uh, you know... I think part of it was Calipari wanted to tell his players. And there was supposed to be a players meeting at his house this afternoon, but it got canceled. And what I've seen was his players are gone. They're, I mean, they're either going mm. off and training for the NBA, they, they've entered the portal, uh, or they're just, they weren't a whole lot around campus to have a meeting. And so I thought that was the hang up, and then the official announcement would come. I don't know if there's something. I've heard there's an unwritten rule that you don't want to upstage the championship game, and that's why the press conference wasn't today, and uh, we're expecting a press conference tomorrow. Mm. But that's a good question. I'm not sure why they haven't announced it unless they're just waiting until the championship game after the championship game to make that announcement. But that's just a, a theory. Uh, Wes Moore's with us, Fox 16 there, in Little Rock 1037, The Buzz. You've heard, I mean, he's been a great friend of our show for a long time, broke this news yesterday. Uh, as, at least as far as I saw, Wes, I don't know that anybody else had it before you. You're the first person I saw that had it. Um, what, uh, what is the reaction there in, in Arkansas country? I mean, that, it, it seems everyone's pretty fired up. Is, is that a, a fair assessment outside looking in? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say 90%, 95% are very excited about this. You know, you're going to have those that look at it in the last four or five years in Kentucky and say, he's 65. He's at the back end of his career. He's not, you know, doing the same thing. He's not having the success he had. Maybe it's because of age. Maybe the, the game has passed him up. Uh, the one and done isn't working anymore. So you have those out there that are, aren't convinced that this is a good hire. But you know how it is, Matt. Nobody is a home run hire, slam dunk hire for 100% of the people. But for the vast majority, they are very excited about this hire. And and I believe they're going to get a John Calipari that's motivated again, that's got a chip on his shoulder that wants to go out. Look, he's got a chance to take a fourth university to a Final Four. Who else has done that? Uh, I don't that... think anybody has. I haven't looked it up yet, but we were talking, just got off the air, and we were talking about that. Some coaches have taken three yeah, schools Patino to did. Final Four. Yeah, Patino with three, I know for sure. Um, and Eddie Sutton came up also, mm -hmm, but yeah. you know this this is a chance to cement his legacy if he has success at Arkansas as truly one of the you know the greatest coaches. Yeah. And uh, I think you're going to see a very motivated Calipari to get a fresh start. And you know sometimes a fresh start is good for for a person. So I think it's a it's a great situation for Arkansas. And they're they're getting a guy that's going to be highly motivated to prove. Uh, some doubters wrong at, at Kentucky. You know, he wants to beat the hell out of Kentucky now. Yeah. Why did Musselman leave? Uh, USC was one of his dream jobs. I, I was told that probably three years ago. There was a there was a job that came open after one of the Elite Eight runs, and, you know, some people here in Arkansas got a little nervous about Musselman leaving, and that's when he got a, a, a you know, contract extension. And, and my, one of my sources told me there are three jobs to worry about. USC, UCLA, and San Diego State. You know, he's, he's an alum of San Diego State. That's where he played ball. And he's a West Coast guy. I mean, we saw it all the time, Matt. When he would go on a vacation, a quick getaway, it was always to the West Coast. You know, his mom's out there. Um, he, a lot of friends are out there. That's just, that's, that's home to him. Yeah. And he's going home. It is as simple as that. 
Uh, I was told Arkansas offered a very nice retirement package that all he'd have to do is stick around for five more years. And he turned it down. Mm. And it was a very lucrative retirement package. Uh, and that showed me and told me that this wasn't about Arkansas. This wasn't about money. This was about going home. And I can respect that. Last thing for you, Wes. Arkansas, you and I have had this conversation before, but it's worth bringing up again today. Arkansas, for me, has always been the most perplexing team in the conference as to why they haven't had more success across the board. Because you have to have money to be able to compete. You have to. It's just a prerequisite. And Arkansas doesn't just have a lot of M's. They have a lot of B's. Tyson Chicken, Walmart, Jerry Jones. And this is proof of it, right, Wes? I mean, they were able to go make a few phone calls and get this done and you know, and, and shake the trees and get the cash. Why has why hasn't it been better there? I may maybe that's a, a kind of a crass way of asking it, Wes, but like you got the money. Why haven't the wins across the board followed? I would say the guys that have the money they don't just give their money away. They made a lot of money for a reason, and they've got a lot of money for a reason. They've got to want to give it away. And in this case, because of the relationship between Tyson and, and Calipari, he wanted to step up and give a lot of money to make sure Calipari could be paid to come to Arkansas and that Calipari would have the money it takes for NIL to get the job done. And so I think that's part of it right there. Uh, maybe in the past, some of these guys. now Walmart and and the and the Waltons, they haven't done a whole lot and and the and I don't know what the uh, the stigma there is and and uh, but I know they do a lot for the arts um, but mm. uh, as far as the football program I don't know how involved or the the sports program how involved they are sure uh, but you know we've seen Jerry Jones from time I mean Jerry Jones the Student Athletic Center it's it's the and Jerry Jones paid for that millions and millions of dollars and it's a state of the art facility that's a, a great recruiting tool for Arkansas but um this Tyson move was huge to yeah. get Cal it does it doesn't happen without uh John Tyson getting Cal Perry Wes Moore uh Fox 16 there in Little Rock 1037 the buzz been a good friend for a long time hey man appreciate I know it's a busy day when something like this happens and you're at the epicenter so thanks for for making a few minutes for us today you bet always Matt all right, man. Be well. Uh, that's Wes Moore. It's after further review brought to you by the Williamson Eye Center. 924-2020, 924-2020, or williamsoneye.com. If you want to see 2020, call 924-2020. I just couldn't recommend enough that let this be your push to just make that phone call and let this be the nudge to go for that consultation. Change your life. It's not many days people can say that and you mean it legitimately. But if you wear contacts or glasses, I know what it's like to wake up in the morning, to have to reach to the bedside table, to put on your glasses out of the old prescription because you never get it redone because you put in your contacts, you know, you're, you you scratch your eye, you rip a contact, you travel, you got to pack it, you forgot it, you have solution. It, I, I, I've been there. But not anymore. LASIK changed my life. They can do the same for you. It's the Williamson Eye Center. 924-2020 or williamsoneye.com. I do want to react to... Um, the Calipari to Arkansas news. And Jeff Drummond is going to give us the Kentucky side of this story in about 15 minutes. When we come back, um, we uh, we got on Friday the Trey Holly update, and then Brian Kelly, when he met with reporters on Saturday after the the open practice, uh, I actually I asked Brian Kelly about the Trey Holly news, and he gave, a, I thought, a great detailed answer. So I want to talk about that and the LSU running back situation. I also think there's, there's a lot of synergies with... John Calipari going to Arkansas, similar to Brian Kelly leaving Notre Dame and coming to LSU. In some respects, like it, it can be, it can be time. It's just time. It's time for a change. It's time for something new, and that it might be where they got with uh, John Calipari. Maybe even where Calipari was a similar spot where Brian Kelly was. The difference is Calipari is already sixty-five years old. I mean, it's like one more. One more push. See if you get another team over the hump. We'll see if you can get it. Um, okay, quick break. Come back. Let's talk some LSU running back stuff. It's AFR. AFR. Love telling you about Action Industries since 1982. Remember, if you're a, a maintenance manager, turnaround coordinator in one of the plants, our friends over at Action Industries, they want to talk to you. And the great thing about Action Industries, too, is, man, 
there's a lot of great, great commercial contractors that do fantastic work in plants. And some of them are just massive. But the thing about action is, you know, if you need a 100-person job, you would be action's biggest client, and you get all of their best and their undivided attention. For some of the gigantic commercial contractors, like, are you really their priority at that point? It's Action Industries. Learn more, have that relationship. Remember, our friends over at Action, they also have fabrication shop services, pipe, structural seal, pressure vessels. They can do exchange tube cleaning as well. Exchanger tube cleaning as well, excuse me. It's Action Industries. Power up your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. So Friday, uh, there was a development in the Trey Holly case, and we learned that he will not, the grand jury decided not to bring charges of attempted second-degree murder against Trey Holly, which is, is, is great news on so, so many levels. Not just a football thing, but just in a real-life Circumstance. They did, however, um, charge Trey Holly with one felony count of illegal use of a weapon or dangerous instrumentality. Uh, that coincided, of course, with the open practice on Saturday where media got to watch the entirety of practice and went out there, and obviously there was a heavy workload for Josh Williams and Caleb Jackson. As LSU's got two scholarship running backs out there uh, for spring. Now, it's worth noting that you will get Caden Durham, the freshman, coming to campus uh, in June. 
And the hope is, obviously, a reinstatement for Trey Holly. Now, uh, after practice, Brian Kelly met with reporters on Saturday and asked Brian for a, a comment on um, on the Trey Holly situation with, uh, obviously, fr- Friday evening is when we learned of the grand jury's decision. So this was Brian Kelly's comments on Saturday around noon. I was in, uh, we had a, a coach's clinic, and his head high school coach came up to me who was here at the clinic and, and told me that uh, the serious charges were, were dropped. And so, you know, we were confident based upon information that was shared to us. But you, you just don't know. I mean, you know, we know Trey Hawley. We've been with him. I, um, I don't know Trey Hawley, but... You heard what Brian Kelly said. You talk to people around Farmerville who say how that's so out of his character. And then, you know, I rem- that, look, the statement that, that Trey Holly put on social media back on February 17th is the thing that made me go, okay, like, I believe the kid. I mean, it was a, it, it is, it was the statement that you would exactly want someone, it was exactly what you would want to see from someone who is charged with that when they adamantly and vehemently deny. I mean, he said, I am, quote, I have been falsely identified, accused, and arrested. I am 100% innocent, and the people that know me know this is not my character at all. I was not involved in the incident at all. I mean, you can't be any more direct than that. That's not the non-denial denial. That's straight-up denial. Like, I had nothing to do with this. So there's believability there. Um And Brian Kelly actually went further and talked about reinstatement for Trey Holly. We advocated for him to continue his schooling, and we were happy that he was able to continue his schooling here as an online student. So he's maintained his his eligibility because of that. So we'll be, you know, obviously uh, monitoring and making sure that, you know, I think they're talking about, you know, sometime in the middle of April that, that we could see a full resolution to this. At that time, you know, we'll we'll begin the process and assisting him for uh, reinstatement, and we'll advocate for him on his behalf and um, and and welcome him back. It sure sounds like Trey Holly's going to be with his football team. I mean, Brian Kelly said they had based on the information they have. Again, I'm, I'm going to talk about the football component of this in a second, but based on the foot the information that they have and that that they felt good about it, Trey's statement, knowing Trey Holly, that he was innocent of these charges. And they advocated for him to continue schooling online, so he's maintained his eligibility, and they've already begun the process for whenever this is completed. You heard him say they're in the middle of April, which you would think is in the next week or so, that Trey Holly would then be offered reinstatement and then would be back with the team. Um, You know, Trey Holly played in three games last year. So he still maintains his year of eligibility from a season ago. You know, so he could he essentially would be a redshirt freshman this season. I understand there is a far more serious component of this when you talk about felony charges, but we are a sports show. So part of my responsibility to you, the audience, is to talk about how this impacts LSU on the field. We all sincerely hope that those who are guilty are brought to justice. And if Trey Holly had nothing to do with this, as he said, that he is exonerated and is free to go and continue his career and his life and all that sort of stuff. I think the real question for LSU right now is, what do you do with two or potentially a maximum of three scholarship running backs? Like, Can you sustain that based on tr- the Trey Holly situation? You know, and so far in spring, remember, like you've got two... It's, su- it's such an interesting contrast of a year ago when LSU had eight eight scholarship running backs. And Brian Kelly talk, was asked so much throughout fall about having eight scholarship running backs. Well, John Emery's gone, and Trey Bradford's gone, and Armani Goodwin's gone, and Noah kane has gone. And so you look up and you're like, man, you're you're so thankful that Josh Williams is using his sixth year because otherwise you would just be sitting here in spring with Caleb Jackson. So they've, as, as Brian Kelly said, like they've had to be sort of cautious here this spring having just two guys. It's work volume. You can't run those guys into the ground and, and have a really good practice. You know, because at the end of the practice, you know, you're doing, you know, a lot of teamwork. 
and if you're running those guys into the ground, you, you really can't have the kind of reps that you're looking for. So, you know, we brought in three walk-ons who have done a great job. I mean, really have allowed us to practice at a level where they can step in and whether it's a um, seven on seven or, or it's a half line pass or half line run have allowed those guys to take a, a break. So without those guys in particular, we would not be in a really good position in the spring. So we got saved by the bell in terms of the walk-ons at the running back position. Um, so they're making it work here in spring, but again, it also underscore, underscores the point that we talk about all the time. I, I don't need my veteran players, my, I don't need my sixth year running back taking reps in spring. I, I know what Josh Williams is on Saturdays in the SEC. I don't care what he is on a Tuesday in April. I, I just don't care. Make sure that guy's ready to roll. Same with Caleb Jackson. And Brian Kelly, by the way, one more, and, and like, I, 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 I sketched this out today about like the sustainability of, of a running back room with four running backs. And I'll talk about that in just a second, but Brian, Ke this is another super encouraging uh, part about about Caleb Jackson, who man, he wowed with his bullish running style a year ago, even in limited touches and attempts. But listen to Brian Kelly talk about how Caleb Jackson has sort of developed just in this short off season. You know what we've been balancing here is his workload. As you guys know, we have two scholarship backs in spring ball. He's a big back. He's growing into his body. So the workload capacity and the fatigue has really taught him how to take care of himself. He's understanding how to eat better, how to uh, hydrate, how to recover. And those are great things, right? I mean, because he cares so much, we'll catch him up on blitz protections and things of that nature. This is how he takes care of his body. So that's where we're at with him. That's the chapter that he's going through. And I'm fine with it because he's learning so much about himself right now. You know, if you just have... Williams and Caleb Jackson. And then you add Caden Durham. Is that enough? It, well, obviously, it seems as though they're going to get Trey Holly back. But looking to, so I went back and looked at some seasons in recent memory that would be comparable to this. And I think what it shows, obviously, is last year with eight is a massive outlier. In 2021, Ty Davis Price was your leading rusher. He had a thousand yard season, mostly in part because he ran for 300 yards against Florida that year. But TDP had 211 rushing attempts. Among running backs, next was Corey Kiner with 79. Then you had Josh Williams with 23, and Armani, Armani Goodwin with 16. So really, you had one dude that shouldered all of the load, and then another guy who spelled him a little bit. Go back to 2019. We all know Clyde was first team All-SEC in 2019. Clyde had 215 reps, um, uh, uh, rushes, almost the same number as Ty Davis Price. And then you had Ty, and then TDP that year at 64, Curry at 38, Emory at 39. So really, you've seen these seasons where you've had one running back who shouldered the, the line share of the carries, and then another guy who's just spelling from time to time. You know, 2018 might actually be the best comp. Nick Brissett that year at 240. 40 rushing attempts. Clyde had 146. Now, your third leading rusher was Burrow at, with 128. But if you're just talking running backs, you had Brissett with 140, or 240, excuse me. Clyde with 146. Lenard Fournette had 12. Tay Provins had four. Chris Curry had eight rushing attempts. So really, it was two guys in a run heavy offense. I think 2018, now this team should pass it a lot better than 2018 did. But that's probably your best comp, where you can look at Williams, Caleb Jackson, splitting some 400 carries, 350 to 400 carries, and really being your your pace car, your bell cow there. And whatever's left over, late in blowouts, or if someone turns an ankle, God forbid, you'll see maybe Caden Durham, Trey Holly get those reps. Or maybe Trey Holly comes in if he is back, and, and you can see sort of a three-headed monster the way we have seen in the past. You know, the most um, gratuitous sharing offensively among the carries that I can remember is 2011, where you had Spencer Ware, Spencer Ware and Alfred Blue and Michael Ford, and then late in his freshman season, you know, we saw Kenny Hilliard emerge. 
that was that was an offense that had so much talent at running back and just and shared the ball because they could. I think what this exercise proved though is you're not gonna have eight like you did last year, but four can be plenty in this offense. I think it will be. Okay. It's after further review. Let me knock out a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're heading up to Lexington. We were in we were in uh, Fayetteville just about 15 minutes ago, getting the Arkansas perspective. Let's go up to Lexington and see how they're reacting in big blue country there with Cal heading to Arkansas. Stay here. AFR. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana the local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Doors Siding. 
Oh, yeah, they also do interior shutters. Let's head up to Lexington. Our buddy Jeff Drummond from Cats Illustrated, good enough to join us. Jeff, we appreciate it, man. How are you? Doing good, man. How are you doing? Um, Probably not as busy as you are, so I appreciate you making the time. Uh, let's just start with the easy one. Uh, what's what's the reaction up there to Cal heading to Arkansas? Goodness, you get uh, unlimited text and that kind of thing in, in this day and age of coaching searches because my phone is just blown up for about the past 24 hours. I believe it. Um, it's, it's been an interesting reaction, uh, to tell you the truth. I think a lot of people are relieved to hear this. Um, a lot of folks felt like there was going to be kind of a dark cloud hanging over next season uh, to where they just did not expect changes to be made about how Kentucky was operating and uh, – the strategy with, within the games, the roster construction, the lineups. And it had re- really reached a point where I think it was in danger of turning ugly. It it didn't get to that point. Uh, Cal might suggest otherwise. You know, obviously he wants to, to move on and, and get a fresh start. But it never really got to the point of uh, kind of being venomous or <laughs> that, that type of thing. People were just kind of tired and I think we were bordering on anger if they went into another season uh, that didn't come close to the program's expectations. Jeff, is it fair to say that if there wasn't the massive $30 million buyout that John Calipari would have been fired after this past season? Yeah, I kind of believe that that would have happened uh, without that. Uh, that that probably was the difference, but as it turned out for Kentucky, it, it couldn't have worked out any better. And and it may have been for both parties, you know, to, to not have an acrimonious uh, split and, and and to just go their separate ways and say this was the right time for it to happen. Is now that, Kentucky has a lot more, you know, Kentucky has a lot more funds in the, in the coffers now <laughs> to go out and find the next guy. Sure. Is it a... Uh, slight, perceived, or otherwise, uh, a shot to the ego, the pride of what I think is one of the four best jobs in the country. I mean, it's it's Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina. I put them in a bag, shake them up. Everyone will have their own opinion, but those are the four best jobs in college basketball. And your coach leaves for an in-conference opponent. Any any perceived slight there? I don't sense any. I think the relief the sense of relief is so strong right now that people really don't have any hard feelings. They just kind of wanted a, a fresh start because uh, Kentucky for the last four seasons, uh, you know, I'm sure people are aware that they haven't come anywhere close to their expectations. It, it, the expectations here to clarify are a little different than what you hear a lot of times people suggest on uh, ESPN or, or the national media. The fans here don't expect a, a national championship every year. They don't even expect Final Four every year, but the realistic expectation for the average Kentucky fan is to be in that Elite Eight group, a top 10 team for most of the season, get to the Elite Eight, have a chance regularly to be in the Final Four, and you you put give yourself a chance to win a championship from time to time. Mm. And that just hasn't been happening since 2015. To, to think about a, Kentucky, a program with Kentucky's resources and Kentucky's recruiting classes and the amount they're paying a Hall of Fame coach that they haven't been to a Final Four since 2015 is just staggering. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not even necessarily like it's just the Final Fours. It's it's the early exits from the tournament that, considering the talent, have, have been surprising. So, Je- and Jeff Drummond's our guest, Cats Illustrated. He's on Twitter at JDrumUK. How will people in Lexington remember a, a decade and a half of John Calipari? I think given some time, this may help it be fond memories if we get some separation, you know, 10, 15 years from now. They'll probably feel a little bit different than they do now. But I I really strongly believe that had they let this go one more season, it, it was going to tear this fan base apart mm. and, and become ugly. Mm. Um, the obvious question, Jeff, is all right, who's next? And let me ask – from your perspective, we we had Wes Moore on from Fox 16 up in in Little Rock, and you know he was the first person I saw from the Arkansas side that that broke this news yesterday. Um, he found out yesterday, but he said 
in making calls, it sounds like the conversation started on Friday with Cal. What from what do you understand the timeline to, to be of the John Calipari story? Uh, that was the first time that we really heard about Arkansas being being floated out there. We even had a a coaching profession contact of ours send us a note and say, "Hey, this." This has some legs to it, and and he told us he said I don't think this ends up happening, but Arkansas is talking and John Calipari is listening. Uh, so I I knew at that point there there could be a distinct possibility, but in the back of my mind, I kept saying no, nah, this probably won't materialize. So uh, who's next? <laughs> That is what's going to have this fan base uh, missing a lot of sleep over the next uh, week or so if it takes that long. But the the names we are hearing so far through some back channels, and none of these involve Mitch Barnard is the one ultimately making the decision, Kentucky's athletic director. Uh, but I think they're going to make uh, Dan Hurley and Jay Wright turn down massive offers. Now, Hurley's got a team in the national championship game tonight, likely to win back-to-back titles. Who knows if he would even entertain leaving. But UConn doesn't have the SEC kind of money that Kentucky does in terms of paying coaches. And that might be a factor there. I think Kentucky's going to throw out an absurd number and force him to turn it down. Hmm. I think Jay Wright's people hear the same story and say, do you want to come out of retirement and give this another run? Here's a huge number. Uh, popular opinion there is that he's happily retired and, and doesn't want to get back in it. After that, we hear Billy Donovan's name, which uh, I think his run with the Bulls is kind of coming to an end. They're having trouble with roster construction there, and mm. the future does not look bright in Chicago. He's a guy that Kentucky's made a couple of pitches to over the years when they had uh, coaching changes. This could be third time's a charm. Uh, for Billy D uh, to get him back in here. And that, of course, also connects to Rick Patino. There are some people out there saying, you know, he's 71, but he's got a lot of juice left. Could he be a guy that gives you four or five really good years <laughs> no with way. a chance to, to reclaim the glory? <laughs> and the funny part about that is you get folks in taking the next step. Can he talk Reed Shepard into maybe uh, staying a little bit longer? with the Cats and building a team around him. That would be true for both Mm. Patino and uh, Billy Donovan, who had uh, relationships with Jeff Shepard. Hurley, Jay Wright, Billy Donovan, Rick Patino. Do you think... uh, I skipped one. I apologize. (laughs) The most likely and the safest (laughs) bet of them all. I don't know how I did that, but those other guys have a lot more sizzle to them. Is Scott Drew at Baylor. Okay. Do you think? Do you, lot, think of, do you think it's fair? No, please go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The fans in, engaging their temperature so far would not be crazy about that, but I think he might be Mitch Barnhart's favored guy to do, handle this transition and and be the kind of person, the combination of uh, character and his ethics, uh, X's and O's recruiting i think drew's got the number three class maybe right behind kentucky uh right now so that that looks like it would be a really good bid and if vegas put odds on it that might be the guy at at the top of the list man scott drew's making eight million dollars a year at baylor um (laughs) i mean dan hurley's making five right now i mean it's it's kentucky basketball man i i don't think they're gonna gonna pay maybe upwards of of 10 11 12 you know They're, they're, they're going to pay whatever it takes. It is Kentucky basketball. They they, they will not lose the, their coach because of a dollar figure. That that much seems abundantly nope. clear. <laughs> uh, Jeff Drummond on Twitter at JDrumUK. Fascinating times. Th- I, look, I know you're busy, man. Thanks so much for, for taking a few minutes today. Hey, always a pleasure, man. Take care. All right, man. Be well. Uh, good stuff there from Jeff. Appreciate that. Dan Hurley, Jay Wright, Billy Donovan, Rick Patino. That one surprised me. It's 71 years old, Rick Patino. But it's it's like there are Kentucky basketball loyalists that still love Rick Patino. It's like there are people in this country that if you gave them, them the opportunity to vote for Bill Clinton today, they'd still vote for Bill Clinton. It's just there are people that are 
that that ha that have this sort of mag mag magnetism to them that will always be that right um, forever. So yes, I mean I remember, golly, I hate to make it a political thing, but like when Edward Edwin Edwards, I mean Edwin Edwards was a convicted felon went to prison, and was running for U.S. Uh, represent for Congress. I think he made a runoff. I mean, it's great, but yes, it, there's like, there will be people. I'm not saying that's plausible. For whatever it's worth, Billy Donovan's 58 years old. Scott Drew's 53. Donovan at 58, man, it feels like if you can get Billy Donovan back in the college game after this it, this stint in the NBA um, and get him back in the SEC, obviously he has ties to Kentucky where he was an assistant. That would be, that would feel like a massive win for Kentucky if they could get that. But literally anybody on that list, Dan Hurley, Jay Wright, Billy Donovan, Rick Patino, Scott Drew. Scott Drew's one. There, you you realize, like, can, you heard Jeff there? Kentucky fans are, like, turning their nose up at the idea of Scott Drew, who won a national championship, who inherited maybe, maybe the worst situation in, bas in college basketball history where a player had murdered a teammate and the administration, like, bungled the whole thing. Uh, and he resurrected that poop pile into a national championship. Uh, and they're saying, I don't know about Scott Drew. Like, really? You don't know about Scott Drew? Okay. Uh, we'll take Scott Drew. I love Matt McMahon. But I think Matt McMahon would even say, no, you take Scott Drew. Anyway. All right, it's after further review. We're glad you're with us. Monday shows are brought to you by Relief Windows, reliefwindows.com. Um, well, now I got a quick break. Come back. Um, Muse will do Tigers and the Pros. Luch will join us here in about 15 minutes. Talk some SEC baseball. One giant surprise this past weekend in the conference, which means uh, if you didn't see it, uh, Missouri swept Florida. So one of the series we're all looking at going, hey, let's shoot, get that one. Ah, maybe not. Say it for. AFR. Brought to you by the Watermark Hotel and the Renaissance Hotel. Two amazing hotel pro properties. Watermark, downtown Renaissance, Southtown. Hey, y'all, this Friday at the Renaissance is the next evenings at the Renaissance. It, um, you know what? I need to check to see if it's full. But our friends from Sugarfield Spirits will be there. Uh, they'll have a great tasting with some exceptional spirits and cocktails from Sugarfield Spirits. If you're interested, you can check them out, the Renaissance Hotel, right there on Blue Bonnet. Just, it's Blue Bonnet across from the mall in Perkins Row, kind of between, you know where it is, you can't miss it. It's, you know, 30 seconds from the interstate. It's the Renaissance Hotel. Hey, if you're hosting an event, be it a fundraiser, an awards banquet, if it's a wedding reception, or you need a place to hold a board meeting, the Renaissance Hotel, from a dozen people to 500 people, they're in the business of saying yes to make your event possible. Check them out at the Renaissance Hotel. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us.
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Wrapping up hour number two, Musu as Tigers in the Pro. Tigers in the pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. We start in the NBA where Nas Reed turned in new. No, 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 no. New. Nope. From New Jersey. Should have stayed. But he did. Yeah, that's for sure. But he turned in a career night last night for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, he did. 31 points, 11 rebounds. That's the first time in Nas's career he's totaled up a double-double of 30-plus points and 10-plus boards. He also had a career-high 23 points in the first half against the Los Angeles Lakers. I kind of want to go old takes exposed on LSU fans for Nas Reed now. I kind of want to do that on Twitter tonight. Because of the should have stayed thing? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, we're way, way, way late on this. But I, I kind of want to do it now. Okay. I mean, I don't blame you. I mean, it, look, it, guys had a great career so far and just turned in a career high. I think that's yeah. a good time to do it. Yeah, it might be a little past when he left, but I mean, yeah. the, the premise still stands. Uh, he's had a great year. We've told you about it really since November when the season started. In Minnesota, they're capitalizing on it, man. They are pushing him for sixth man of the year all over their social media. And he's being pushed so hard that Nas Reed actually showed up at WrestleMania uh, this weekend. Not actually Nas Reed, but we also told you they had Nas Reed beach towel night. And yep. one of the Nas Reed beach towels made it to WrestleMania and made it on like the two shot. It was on the worldwide broadcast. There it is. Just Nas Reed across the beach towel. So good. Which, I mean, could they have actually done better with that towel? No. You don't, I mean, not like a poster dunk of Nas just stretched across the towel. It's literally just his name in like Times New Roman. Way better. You can read it like that. Okay. All right. So, yeah, Nas Reed uh, destroying the Lakers and making appearances, or at least his name is making appearances. I saw Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson at WrestleMania. They too. were there. Yeah. In luchador masks. How about that? How about it? Jason Kelsey's awesome. Taylor Swift's like, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Cam Thomas uh, dropped 21 points last night on the Sacramento Kings. Let's talk some uh, UFL, would shall love, we? Would love to. John Trey Kirkland. Heard of him. Seven receptions, 53 yards, and a touchdown. The touchdown was a pretty big one. So the Brahmas scored 20 points in the fourth quarter to win the game. Wow. A little fade route for uh, John Trey. Inside leverage on the defender. Just bodies Look him at up. That. Goes Threw up. The flag yeah. too. Gets, the, gets the ball. And that was the uh, part of the 20-point the comeback in the uh, fourth quarter. That was with 48 seconds left. They scored again. 
Uh, so pretty dominant stuff there by the Brahmas for one quarter at least. And then um, Glenn Logan, two tackles for the Houston Roughnecks. Okay. Alex Lang yesterday. The Langer. The Langer. Uh, didn't go great for the Tigers, but Lang had a pretty good day. One inning, only gave up a run. And, uh, you know, again, the Tigers lost, but Lang pitched well. So that's Tigers in the press. Presented by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, lmfj.com, lmfj.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Ever walked into a store, you see the sort of disheveled guy with, you know, the un- untucked, half untucked shirt, pulls out the calculator. I'm trying to explain to you what a great deal you got. Does that feel like you're getting a great deal? Does it feel like a great experience? Shouldn't. I mean, because you know, like, they're just giving the guy next to you the same deal. <laughs> uh, something to be said about walking into a place that's packed. It's like, what happens when you walk into an, an empty restaurant as opposed to a full restaurant? Well, that's Lee Michaels. LMFJ.com. It's why for four decades, people in Baton Rouge and all across Louisiana have gone to Lee Michaels to get engaged. The finest selection of the highest quality diamonds where you always get the Lee Michaels experience. Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, lmfj.com. Thrill her with the gift in the red box from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Okay, y'all, it's after further review. Monday show is brought to you by Relief Windows. David DeLucci joins us when we come back right after Sports Center. Recap a, a busy weekend in SEC baseball, a disappointing weekend for the Tigers. What is it going to take to get going? That's next, AFR. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Shabills Tire and Auto Service. Shabillstire.com. Shabillstire.com. Hey, go to the website and uh, Shabillstire.com. Hit the promotions tab right at the top. Mobile site as well. Just pull up your phone. Shabillstire.com. And you'll see all the current promotions. Uh, like $180 off instantly on a set of four new select Toyo tires. And also... I tell you all the time, like they'll combine the manufacturer's offer with their own in-house offer. Like if you use the Shabell's credit card, they'll offer you free installation, which is a hundred and ten dollar value. You can get all of the details at the website at shabillstire.com about all their promotions, but they guarantee it. Buy tires at Shabill's, see the same tires advertised for a cheaper price within thirty days. They'll refund you a hundred twenty-five percent of the difference. It's part of the Charlie's dozen. That's why Shabill's is the best. They treat you like family. Shawbillstire.com. Shawbills, where we keep you rolling. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. It's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work 
creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. I'm Christine Lisi. One final test for Connecticut in its repeat title bid. Purdue in tonight's men's national championship game. Huskies have not lost an NCAA tourney game since March 17th of 2022. They're 5-0 all-time in national title games. ESPN college basketball analyst Seth Greenberg. UConn is the most complete team. He might have bigger numbers than Klingon, but it's the collective responsibility of this Connecticut team that makes them just different. And it starts with their ability to defend the ball and that's all about Stephen Castle. The game's going to be won in the backcourt and ball pressure as opposed to what everyone thinks, the battle up front. Roster fallout from John Calipari's decision to leave Kentucky for the Arkansas job has begun. Wildcats freshman Aaron Bradshaw entered the transfer portal and top 25 recruit Carter Knox decommitted from the Wildcats and reopened his recruitment. Calipari's Arkansas deal expected to be finalized soon. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletes Council of Presidents approved a policy today to ban transgender athletes athletes from women's competitions by a 20 to 0 vote. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. At Progressive, they're making things even easier. They'll help you bundle your home and car insurance together so you can save on both. Learn more at progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Number three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. You're a loser, Matt. Hey, shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you so. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Five o'clock quitting time. Glad you are driving home with us. Saints are hosting a wide receiver prospect in the draft. I want to get to that here in about 15 minutes from right now. National championship game tonight, Purdue and UConn. We'll give you a thumbnail preview of that. Otter locks later this hour. Ton to do. Uh, we begin the five o'clock hour here, hour three, as we do um, every Monday during baseball season with our buddy David DeLucci to recap the weekend that was in conference play. Luch, how are you, man? Hey, I'm doing good, Matt. Can I give a quick shout out Please. to one of our Baton Rouge Mudbugs softball players from the softball girls softball team that I helped coach? Let's go. Karen Tarina, our big home run hitter, texted me <laughs> and said she listens to you every Monday and can't wait to hear what we talk about. I so love I it. Say hello to Taryn. Yeah. What up, Taryn? Hey, man, those Tarinas, they are one heck of a crew, man. Um, I'm a bit, I'm a big Torina family fan. Let's put it to you that way. Yeah, absolutely. That's, absolutely. So All you're, successful. You're, uh, you're coaching the squad. So, yeah. So what we, uh, we've got a great little softball team. My daughter Ruby's on there Shout and, out. and just good, uh, group of athletes that get in there. What I really like about it is they're scrappers they're gamers. They know when to lose, so we don't have to spend 12 hours on elimination day. Uh, so we get in there, get our reps, and we're out of there, man. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> oh, man. Is um is, is uh, the other coach, Tarina, one of your assistants? 
You know, she doesn't make all the games. No, 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 uh, no. The, is, uh, the other oh, Coach oh, the Tarina. Other, oh, the other to- Coach Tarina, yeah. Mr. Uh, Tarina. Yeah, Nick is a, Mr. Is a Beth huge Tarina. part. He is huge. <laughs> Our first base coach, and uh, he's known to uh, been known to get into it with the umpires a time or two. Uh, he, he think, he, you know, he likes to throw <laughs> his weight around and, and, and work his old softball. <laughs> By the way, for those who don't know, and he will he will remind you if uh, if you've ever had a conversation. Uh, Nick Torina was on the Houston baseball team that came to Baton Rouge and swept the eventual national champion. 2000 LSU Tiger. So he is uh, quite he is quite fond of that, and will tell you that story if you ever ask him, or even if you don't ask him, he's going to tell you that that uh, that anecdote. He'll tell an umpire that too. Now he's not, he's not afraid. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's lose. I'm glad for the levity. Uh, we need it before we talk about the LSU baseball team. Uh, wah, wah. Tigers uh, lose this series to Vandy. Luch, they're running out of time. They're three and nine. Is this fixable? It is fixable, but um, as, as as you said, they're running out of time, man, and they've gotten themselves to a, a spot where they're going to have to start sweeping series. And early on in the year, we uh, we felt pretty confident with, with games one and games two in, in series, and now you look and you're four series into the season, into the conference season, and you've been run-ruled three of the four game threes and, and you're going to have to figure something out big time because uh, I, I think LSU is in desperate need of someone in the staff, not named Herring and not named Holman to step up and get up there and, and be effective. And unless they can find that you're going to depend on your offense for a sweep and the offense just hasn't started clicking. Now, I, I truly believe the talent is there, and at some point they are going to figure it out. It's still a young team that's inexperienced in conference play. Now they're getting some innings and some maybes under their, their belt. We're going we're gonna to get past that excuse in a couple weeks, but uh, sweeps are a must for them to, uh, to make it into the postseason. I don't know that that's possible this weekend against Tennessee, Luch. Um, I mean, that's a – it's a tall order. What, what's your thoughts on this Tennessee team that LSU is going to face this weekend in Knoxville? They're coming off a serious win against Auburn. Yeah, so they're they're leading uh, the SEC in almost every offensive category. They've got five guys with ten or more home runs. It's a dynamic offense, man. Their pitching staff is starting to slip a little bit. Auburn won Game One uh, against Tennessee and, and you kind of thought, okay, well, Auburn's got a great offense. Let's see what they do for the rest, uh, of the series. And then Tennessee drops what 30 runs in two games or something like that. So it's very difficult to hold back that, that, uh, tremendous offense. It reminds me of, of LSU offenses in the past. It's, it's a good team from top to bottom. It's an emotional team from top to bottom. And what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to suck LSU into getting wrapped up with the atmosphere and some of the antics that the team does and get them off guard. Um, and and that's that's how they're going to beat you. Now, hopefully LSU can continue to, to try to figure out what works with them offensively. Um, and that worries me too, Matty, because I'm, I'm looking at, at the statistics, the individual statistics, uh, throughout the SEC, and aside from Michael Braswell, uh, who I think is fifth or sixth in the SEC conference games and on base percentage, you don't have an LSU guy who's in the top ten in runs, hits, batting average, slugging percentage, home runs, all of that kind of stuff. It's just an odd year offensively because there's nobody really stepping up and producing. Yeah, it's. All the guys in this team, even that were on the team a year ago, weren't. They didn't have to be the guy. You could play an ancillary role to Cruz or Morgan or Beloso or Dugas or Joe Bear, and now the guys aren't stepping up. Um, David Delucci's with us. Uh, you know, one of the series loots that we thought was going to be a, a really gettable series for LSU was Missouri, and uh, they'll play Missouri in, in Como in two weeks. But then Missouri goes and sweeps Florida this weekend. So. What's what got into Mizzou? Mizzou is is exactly what we keep saying about every team in the SEC is that they can beat beat you on any given weekend. Look, Florida played awful 
uh, looked like the hitters were, were just swinging for the fence every single time. It is a big yard. I think Caglione hit a ball that would have been out of any other ballpark that would have helped Florida uh, potentially win. But they just pitched really well. And, and it's not that, that Missouri has bad arms. It's just that they have they don't have much of an offense. And, and uh, if you catch Missouri on a good weekend for them, they're, they're going to make you pay for it, which is what they did to Florida. I think we're starting to learn a little bit more about Florida. And they may not be as dynamic as we thought as well. But LSU's got to bring their A game from here on out no matter who they play. We said it last week. LSU's got a bullseye on their back. They're marked. They're defending national champs. They're going to get the best of everybody out there. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden, Missouri is not the last place team in the league and, and, and potentially may find their way in the SEC tournament. They may not be as bad as we thought they were, but uh, there's no off weeks in, in the Southeastern Conference. That was Missouri's first sweep against Florida in program history uh, this past weekend. David DeLucci is with us a couple more. Um, Luch, when you look up and down the weekend that was in the conference, I mean, that look, Kentucky uh, sweeping Alabama, I mean, we continue. I, I don't think that there's even a question anymore if you say, hey, is Kentucky real? They obviously are. I think the question is, you know, how good can they be? They're 11-1 and one right now in the conference. Is... Um, is is that the, the biggest surprise? Fair to say it's the biggest surprise in the league this year? Yeah, that's the Kentucky is the team that, that I, I just keep looking at their numbers and what they're able to do and I'm like I scratch my head and go, Wait, I I thought this was the team that we talked about who mastered the small ball techniques to win in ball games. They beat Bama, I think, by a total score twenty three to three over the weekend. They're second in the conference and run scored. They're to put it in perspective Tennessee leads the conference with 116 runs scored. Kentucky has 114. Who would have ever thought over the last dozens of years that Kentucky would be that dynamic of an offense? LSU has only scored 61, so that kind of shows you the production that they're doing. Um, on the defensive side, they take pride in, in not making errors, not extending innings, and their pitchers are not overpowering. But they throw strikes, man. And, and, and to me, when I, when I look at Kentucky and I look at LSU and I, I look at the differences in the pitchers and how they attack the strike zone, it seems to me like over the weekend against Holcomb, who had two home runs against LSU, it, it, there was three fastballs in the same spot. And the third fastball that was thrown ended up 466 feet. There was a lot of pitches where LSU's pitchers were pitching behind in the count. And when you pitch behind in the count, you get in trouble. So to me, LSU needs to do a better job of attacking the strike zone, which is what Kentucky does, and not giving the other team the advantage to know what they're coming with when they're coming with. Make adjustments throughout the game. Kentucky does that better than any other conference team right now. Mm. Luch, if I asked you as we approach the the midway point of conference play, we'll hit the midway point after this after this coming weekend. Uh, w what's the biggest storyline, uh, big overarching umbrella storyline in the league? What would you say? Um, I would say uh, I'm going to bring LSU into this. I, 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 I something is going on with defending national champs. We saw it with Mississippi State won the national championship in 2021. They were last in the league the next two years are close to it we see Ole Miss win the national championship they're last in the league don't make the SEC tournament last year and then LSU does is on the verge of doing it. I think LSU has the best chance of pulling out of it but what is it what is going on is it the massive turnover is it the transfer portal I know LSU just doesn't have the quote-unquote leaders that bleed purple and gold that they did last year um, there's there's new guys in the pitching roles. What is it that has cost these three programs the ability to bounce back and dominate like they did on that national championship run? Something is, is out there. I know there's a bunch of people nationwide that are looking into this trying to figure it out. David DeLucci with us each Monday here on AFR. Lucci, we always appreciate it, man. Uh, good luck to the what, what's the, what are the the the, the, the Baton Rouge Mudbugs. The Mudbugs. Good luck to when, right. when are the Mudbugs out there again? Uh, well, we got practice tomorrow, and okay. uh, we're gonna we're gonna work on uh, the small things. Uh, basically, everything that I told you that LSU needs to work on. We'll be right down the street good. at the ladies' complex working on throwing strikes and. 
and uh, hitting the ball out of the ballpark. I'd love to see more of that. We hadn't hit a home run out of the ballpark yet. So, uh, <laughs> but Taryn Tarina has come the closest. I can promise you that. She's a bopper. She, yes, sir. She right. she absolutely crushes the ball. Now I know Mama was a pitcher. So did Mama swing the bat? I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering if Mama is throwing some BP to uh, Taryn and Tatum and Tinley. See, they got three on the team. So if if the Tarinas don't show up to a ball game, we have to forfeit. So we got to get we got <laughs> we got to get them a police escort to get to the game. Oh man, Luch, you're the best. Thanks, man. All right, thanks for having me. All right, be well. It's after further review. Uh, Saints are hosting a, a draft wide receiver this week. I want to talk about him next. It's AFR. AFR. Get Gordon and get it done every year uh, as we approach graduation season. Our friends over at Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys uh, give away a dozen laptops uh, to deserving seniors. So if you're a high school senior, you're going to be heading off to college or maybe trade school, and you want to win a laptop, free laptop, from Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, you can register right now. Go to gordonsgrads.com, gordonsgrads.com. You'll see it right there. Go to gordonsgrads.com and you'll see right there on the homepage how you can fill out that simple form to enter to win a free laptop from Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys. We say all the time, if you've been injured in an accident, it's not your fault. Do what injured people in our state have done for more than three decades. Go to getgordon.com or call 888-8888. But Gordon gives back in so many ways, not just through NIL, but programs like Gordon's Grads. If you're a grad, or if you're a grad, or you have a grad in your family, want to win a free laptop, you can do it. Go to gordonsgrads.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly
After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Uh, we are less than three weeks away from the NFL draft. As a matter of fact, round one is two weeks from Thursday. And you're going to start to hear more and more names uh, among the top 30 visits. If you're not familiar, every team can host 30 players. Uh, you fly them in, almost like an official visit. You can fly them in before the draft, work them out, all that sort of stuff, take them to dinner, all that sort of stuff. You, but you're limited to 30 with which you can do that. Uh, it's often referred to as, the, as your top 30. It doesn't mean it's necessarily like the top 30 players on your board because, I mean, there may be players that you get enough info at, at the Senior Bowl or the Combine or a Pro Day. So maybe this is an opportunity to take a closer look. Or if you didn't have a chance for your position coach to work out a player, you want to bring him in, just get to know him better. There's just a lot of different reasons, but you can do that with 30 prospects. And uh, U Stadium, I don't know what U Stadium is. It's a they got, they got a blue check mark, but it, I guess everybody can now. Um, they report that Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley uh, has already had top 30 visits with the Steelers, Cowboys, Browns, Ravens. And coming up in the next 10 days, he's going to visit the Panthers, Bucks, Saints, Seahawks, Niners, and has now recently added the Jets as well. And apparently he has a Zoom meeting with the Bengals and already met with the Colts OC. So this is a really interesting prospect. Um mostly because so he's a he's a wide receiver out of Western Kentucky and he's interesting because he doesn't necessarily have prototypical size a 5'10 215 and his relative athletic score which <laughs> we know the New Orleans Saints boy do they love them a relative athletic score that's how you end up taking guys like Peyton Turner in round 1 um but his relative athletic score of 776 isn't great. So, but look at all of the, the visits that he's taking. Now, he was a very productive receiver out of the slot at Western Kentucky. So that's where he would project to the next level. And so when you think about, like, who are the best slot receivers in the NFL? Well, Justin Jefferson is the best slot receiver in the NFL. Malachi Corley isn't a carbon copy of Jefferson or Chris Godwin or Jarvis Landry or Adam Thielen or CeeDee Lamb or Tyree Kill. I mean, you're talking about some of the top receivers in the NFL who play out of the slot. But even if you look at the Saints, who need a, a slot receiver, I think this is a pretty obvious need. I mean, look, Chris Olave is dynamic on the outside. Rashid Shahid is a game-breaker. The guy who you played most in the slot last year was Michael Thomas. Well, he's gone. So when you look at the Saints receivers from a year ago, your number one was Alave, your number two was Shahid, your third most productive receiver was Michael Thomas, who's gone. After that, just for just for context, after those three, I'm not talking about pass catchers, I'm not talking about Kamara or your tight ends I'm or Taysom Hill, I'm talking about wide receivers. Alave, Shahid, Michael Thomas. After that, A.T. Perry, who had 12 catches. Lynn Bowden, who had 11. Keith Kirkwood, who had five. So, yes, you went in free agency and you signed Cedric Wilson to a two-year deal and you signed Stanley Morgan to a one-year deal. And Morgan, I think, is a uh, certainly a bubble prospect to make the roster. It's probably just another veteran guy in a, in a pretty young group. Because you signed Cedric Wilson to a two-year deal, although his cap hits only about a million and a half dollars, so you could eat that if he doesn't make the team, like his dead number is a million and a half. You could eat that if he doesn't make the team. It's likely he's going to be one of your receivers if you're going to keep five or six. So like you know Olave and Shahid are going to make the team, very likely Cedric Wilson. I, I would think A.T. Perry is going to have a spot, but you still have at least one, if not two more spots up for grabs. So everyone that's looking, saying the Saints are going to draft a receiver, it stands to reason, and you're most likely going to draft a slot receiver, which is why a guy like Malachi Corley could make sense. So the real question becomes then, okay, where? Like, what's it going to cost you in the draft to get Malachi Corley? So, again, just for context, um, Mel Kuyper, in his most recent big board, where he ranked the top 25 prospects and the top 10 at each position, he has Malachi Corley as the 10th best wide receiver in this year's draft. 
for for correlation, last year the tenth receiver taken was Jalen Hyatt in round three. He went seventy third overall. Uh, Field Yates, who did recently did a two round mock over to ESPN.com, did not have Malachi Corley in his two round mock. Now the highest I've seen Corley mocked. Matt Miller did a seven round mock at ESPN, and he had Malachi Corley fifty one overall to, to Pittsburgh. So that's you know, middle of round two, Mid, middle, late, you know, round two. So you're talking, he'll, he'll be a day two pick, but remember the Saints don't have a three. They have a one, a two, and then they have four fifth round picks, but they don't have a three or a four. So either you're looking at Malachi Corley at 45 overall, or you're hoping to trade back to get assets, or you're moving up with future picks if you're if you're looking at a guy like Malachi Corley, it may be a thing where if you're sitting there in round two, let's let's say hypothetically, you go offensive line at 14, which I'm hoping they do. You all know that. Best available at 45 isn't a receiver. Just play the hypothetical with me. Let's say best available isn't a receiver. Well, let's say Malachi Corley falls into round three, and you fee- and you had a second round grade on him, and you need a receiver. Maybe you package a fifth round pick and like next year's three or something like that. To go up to get him, you know, maybe that maybe that's too steep. I don't know, but let's say you move, you find a way to get up in a round three to take him. That seems like where that might be the most realistic you know, possibility. I don't know if Malachi Corley is going to be the guy, but one of the things that I say all the time is actions speak louder than words. Yes, it is possible that you're bringing him to New Orleans for a top thirty visit as a smokescreen. You're trying to t- to show other people, other teams, hey, we have interest in this guy. So if you want him, snag him before the Saints make a move. That feels like a very expensive smokescreen. You're going to fly uh, fly someone in, not just the cost of airline tickets, hotels, food, all that sort of stuff, but also just the resources you would have to invest in your coaches and staff members working out a player and spending time with this player instead of getting ready for the draft and other things they may have to do. I don't know if that's my favorite choice. I can't tell you I know a ton, right? I, I can I can go look at game film like anybody can. I think the question is, do you trust the evaluation of, of this staff looking at, at receivers? And that's been a spot where they've hit. I mean, A.T. Perry last year in round six felt like a steal. Michael Thomas was great. They clearly hit on Chris Olave. Yeah, I mean, I I look and I go, while they have certainly struggled in certain spots in the draft, I mean, as of now, you have, you know, you've whiffed on Trevor Penning. Uh, Cesar Ruiz has become a starter, but not a very good one. Are you going to get anything out of Nick Saldaveri? Don't know. I mean, you're starting to call into question their ability to evaluate offensive linemen, which is scary because that's probably where you need to go in round one this year. But receiver's been a spot where they've hit. So if they bring in Malachi Corley, they love him, and they go there in round two and you need a slot receiver, it's an interesting one to watch. This is a guy who's on a lot of people's boards. He's taking a lot of visits, and he's an intriguing prospect probably because he's small. He's He's an undersized guy who doesn't have the great athleticism that would pop in like a three-cone drill or a 40-yard dash. Uh, he ran a 4-4-9 in the 40. So he, you know, he doesn't have the blazing 4-3 speed. He doesn't have the prototypical size. He he was a productive player, but at a smaller school. So it makes sense that a lot of teams would want to get a closer look, and the Saints are one of them. So. Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley come to New Orleans for one of their uh, pr- uh, thirty uh, top 30 pre-draft visits. Saints need a receiver. It's undeniable that's going to be a spot they address in this year's draft. Almost like we knew going into last year's draft, they, they had to address running back. You had an aging Alvin Kamara. Yes, you assigned Jamal Williams, but you felt like you had to get younger at that spot, and they did. They took Kendra Miller. Like The Saints are going to take a receiver somewhere in this year's draft. It's just... Where, and is it a slot receiver like a guy like Malachi Corley? We'll see. Okay, um, we're brought to First South Farm Credit, firstsouthland.com. Thinking about buying land? First South Farm Credit should be your first call. You can always log on to firstsouthland.com. I told you Terrio was thinking about buying a, 
a, a piece of property, a hunting property, put him in touch with my guy Tim over at First South Farm Credit. You Ben McDonald, you hear those spots all the time. You know, Ben bought his hunting property. He financed through First South Farm Credit. If you want to buy land, why would you go to anyone other than First South Farm Credit, which has helped Louisianians buy land since 1916? For more than 100 years, that's been their singular focus, helping people in Louisiana buy land. And by the way, maybe you know, you're know you from, from Lafouche, but you want to buy hunting property in Mississippi. But instead of working with someone in Mississippi, you'd rather work with someone who lives and works and plays where you do. Well, that's First South Farm Credit. They can help you buy land in any of the contiguous 48 states. So it doesn't matter if you live in Louisiana and you want to buy hunting property in Texas or you want to buy farmland in Iowa or a ranch in Montana, First South Farm Credit can help. FirstSouthLand.com. Visit them online. Make your first call to First South Farm Credit. Go to FirstSouthLand.com. Okay, it's after further review. Otter locks in about 15 minutes. We'll get Jimmy's pick on uh, the national championship game. I, I don't know what Jimmy's going to pick, but my guess is he's gonna he's gonna ride UConn. It's one of those things where um, you know, you ride a streak and UConn just keeps beating everybody by double digits. And they're a seven and a half point favorite tonight over Purdue, which feels like a very cheap price, but we'll let Jimmy make his pick coming up here in about 15 minutes from right now. Okay, well, not got a quick break. I haven't had any time to get to any emails or texts or anything like that. So if you want to jump aboard, you can email us, tweet us, text us in the 225, 396-4400, 396-4400, 396-4400. Lots of ways you can get involved in the show. All right, quick break. We'll come back. We'll let you hear from the two head coaches. Also, I got to get a thought on the Pels, which um, might have saved their season last night with a gigantic win in Phoenix. We'll talk about it next. It's AFR. AFR. AFR is brought to you by River City's One Hour Air, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. I was going to church yesterday, uh, driving down a Highland Road, and I saw a big yellow van from River City's One Hour Air right there. Sunday doesn't matter. I tell you all the time. Nights, weekends, doesn't matter. If your AC goes out, call River City's One Hour Air because they'll come out nights and weekends. And they'll never charge you extra to come out nights and weekends or holidays at River City's One Hour Air. 752 0001. 752-0001. You know, you'll see them driving all over town, all through your neighborhood, because so many of your friends and neighbors trust River City's One Hour Air like I do. Remember, mention the Moscona Special. They'll knock 25 bucks off any system repair. And please, please, please do this. Get your preseason AC tune-up. Y'all, don't let a small issue become a very big, very expensive issue. Just get your preseason AC tune-up. From River City's One Hour Air. 752-0001. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. 
Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Live After 5 is back this spring. Clock out and rock out with us Fridays from April 12th through May 24th in downtown Baton Rouge for the free concert series at 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Join us for another season filled with incredible music, delicious food, delicious food, talented artists, and a lively second line parade. This Friday, come out to see Groovy 7 for Live After 5. Pell's got it done. Give me Graham! Or no! Uh -oh. Balls in Williamson's hands with 10. Up four. Chess it to McCollum. Not much going on here. Back to Z with five. Got to go. Got to go. Hard to the rim. Throws it up. Got the roll with a left <laughs> hand. Oh, my heavens, Williamson. He went through the entire Suns. Defense. Are you not entertained on this Sunday afternoon? Evans Williamson. I thought his name was Zion. Oh, thank you. Uh, Pills. No. Get... What the hell was that? That was that was brutal. That was a brutal, brutal joke. That was pretty good. That was awful. Pels were desperate for a win. Had lost four in a row, five of six. They had gone from the four seed in the Western Conference for a blink all the way down to the seven out of the playoffs, into the play in. And they're on the road against Phoenix, a team that, well, let's be honest, the last time they saw them, the last couple times, dismantled them with Devin Booker hanging up. Fitty burger on him. You just got embarrassed at home by the worst team in the NBA, although Wemby's playing pretty well. And you have to go on the road for a Sunday matinee game against the same Phoenix Suns and the Pels, who, by the way, at the start of the fourth quarter, when they took the lead, were in a very, very tight ball game, like a tied two point game right there with about nine minutes to play. The Pels managed to get it done. Here was Willie Green on the win. I, I promise you, Willie Green had stuff to, to say. Have an opportunity to coach. Those guys are resilient, and they know what we're playing for. And um, this team has beat us twice, pretty similar. Booker, you know, hitting incredible shots, and, and we wanted to come out tonight and, and um, play with a level of toughness that we know is up to our standard, and that's what we did. Pels had uh, Zion at 29, 10, and 7 for a double double. They needed him. Of course, Z sat out the game against Phoenix with the, or excuse me, against San Antonio with the injured finger. That it, it reeks of okay. He had the the injury uh, against Orlando on Wednesday. They held him out against San Antonio with the feeling that hey, you shouldn't you shouldn't need him in this game, so give him an extra day to get right before you head to Phoenix. And they, it turns out they needed him because they, they dropped a close home game to San Antonio in a game they had absolutely no business losing. But it turns out without your two best players, it's kind of hard to win in the NBA. So they still wait for B.I. to come back, but this road swing is just getting underway, and it's going to be pivotal, right? You have four games left. You're at Portland tomorrow. 
you're at Golden State, then home against the Lakers. And obviously, Golden State and the Lakers are the two teams in the in the 9 and the 10 right now fighting to maintain their position in the play and to give themselves a shot. Now, in fairness, like this is this is what it's going to be. It's just going to be what's the order now, right? Because um you, everyone else has been eliminated. So you know you know the teams that are going to be in you know the teams that are in the playoffs or the play in, right? The Rockets, Jazz, Grizzlies, Blazers, and Spurs have all been eliminated. So you know what teams are going to be in the postseason. It's just a matter of who's in and who's in the play-in. So if you're New Orleans right now, you're tied with Phoenix, but via, uh, via the tiebreaker, they're in the six, you're in the seven. So last night's win over Phoenix was massive on so many levels, but namely because you would have dropped a full game or two games behind Phoenix, actually, had you lost that game. So... Yes, I mean, just a, it's certainly because of the tiebreaker, massive win for New Orleans. Now, when you look at remaining strength of schedule with four to play, the Pell strength of schedule is 16, Phoenix is third. Phoenix has to play Minnesota. They've got two against the Clippers and one against Sacramento. So it's one of those things where everybody plays everybody, everybody that you're looking up at. New Orleans gets to play Portland. I mean, it's it, it like you get a layup while... You get to play Portland, and then, yes, you've got to play Sacramento, Golden State, and the Lakers. And who knows, like, maybe maybe the order will be set. Like, maybe, maybe by the time you get to Golden State and L.A. to end the season, their fate in the play-in will be cemented. So maybe they're resting players. Maybe you catch a break in that respect. I, I don't know. But who plays at home, who plays on the road, could certainly still be up for grabs. We'll see. But like right now, you're three games ahead of Golden State, who's in the 10, but you're a game and a half ahead of the Lakers in the nine. So there's still a lot on the line uh, as you go through these final four games. And it's not impossible to leapfrog Phoenix if you're able to do it. You know, if you're able to win three of your next four, which I'm not saying that's an easy thing to do. But the hardest one, the heaviest lift, you just got through it. But if you can beat Portland, Sacramento, and beat the Lakers at home, even if you lose on the road to Golden State, you go 3-1 and one in these final four, you got a real shot because the Suns have to play a, a back-to-back against the Clippers, home and away. Then they're at the Kings and at Minnesota. Now, the thing that could bite you is, I hate to say it, but it's... If Minnesota at that point is resting everybody in the last game in the last game of the season, so there's so many scenarios out there. Um, and look, Minnesota and Denver are tied, and OKC is one game behind the two of them. But Minnesota be the tiebreakers in the one seed. I mean, yes, it certainly matters what seed you're in based on who your opponent's going to be. But you know, what what does Minnesota feel like they're playing for down the stretch? I I don't know. But all that's going to be determined. It's one of the reasons this is great theater. Because after an 82 game, with an 82 game schedule with just four games to play, you get 78 games in your rearview mirror, four to play, and there's still so much you know, on the line when you look at all of the different scenarios that could play out for who is where. It's one of the reasons the play in idea was, was a brilliant one. Because otherwise, right now, really what you'd be looking at is you know, the Golden State would be out, and could the Lakers catch New Orleans and Sacramento to get into the top eight? But because you have a, a play in now, there's so much on the line for even more teams. But uh, Pels will have the night off tonight, and then they'll play on the road uh, at Portland tomorrow. And, I mean, they're all must-wins at this point. But I really feel like at this point, if you can go 3-1 and one in your final four, I think you can jump into that into that six spot and avoid the play. And I'm not saying it's an easy thing to do, but, is a, but it is doable. You'll get BI back, and then you know, off they go. We'll see how, how they go. All right, it's after further review. We're brought to you by Optimize Generator People. Go to generatorpeople.com, generatorpeople.com. Y'all, I'm not sure if you saw it last week, but the the National Weather Service put out their projection for storm season, and they are projecting a more active than normal storm season. And of course, the reason, obviously, with the the, the warmth and the you know the early spring and all that sort of stuff, but the maybe the the weather conditions from last summer. But either way, we live in Louisiana. You know this is part of living here. Storms are always going to be a threat. 
which means power outages are always a possibility, which is why you've got to protect your family with a Generac automatic home standby generator. Okay. Eric and I did this after Ida, and I, I just can't express to you the peace of mind. Like for us, it was so important because of Drew. And if, like many of you know, our situation, like Drew gets a lot of medicines, and a lot of them have to be cold or refrigerated. So whenever the power goes out, like we couldn't stay at our house. Like we had to pack up and go stay with a relative who had a generator. Never again. We installed a Generac automatic home standby by, by generator. I would highly recommend it to anybody. And I know the first question you're going to have is, can we afford it? Well, with Optimize, the answer is yes, because they have financing options available You know, with an extended limited warranty up to seven years, y'all. Like, yes, you can afford it, and it is so worth peace of mind. So who do you call? Well, you call Optimize. And the reason is, look, there's so many people, so many companies that, that can sell you a Generac automatic home standby generator. But Optimize, the difference is the only thing they sell is Generac automatic home standby generators. They're not, you know, a company that, that has a dozen different verticals and one of them is generators. No, no, no. The only thing they do is sell Generac automatic home standby generators. They sell, service, and install these amazing home whole home generators. They service the entire 1012 corridor. So if you're in Lake Charles, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, 12 to the North Shore, you know, I-10 South toward New Orleans and Slidell, Optimize has an office near you, and they can service your home. It's Optimize. Go to GeneratorPeople.com, GeneratorPeople.com. Again, GeneratorPeople.com for Optimize, Louisiana's number one Generac dealer. Um, okay, y'all, it's after further review. We're going to get to Otterlocks here in a, in a smidge. You got the national championship game tonight. Uh, Dan Hurley and UConn looking to go back-to-back. -back. Matt, uh, Matt Painter and Purdue looking to win the program's first national championship. It is incredible that Purdue um, is here a year after being bounced as, as a one seed, losing to a 16. And here's UConn again, winning every game in the tournament by double digits. What happens tonight? It's, uh, it's going to be great theater. Uh, I think maybe one of the biggest questions is if, uh, if this game will outdraw this national championship game will outdraw the women's national championship game in case you missed it uh espn has released the numbers the iowa south carolina women's national championship game did 18.7 million viewers on abc 18.7 million remember last year lsu iowa was the most watched women's basketball game ever. And it did 9.9 .9 million. They effectively doubled that number from a year ago. An absolute stunning accomplishment. It was the most watched basketball game, men or women, since 2019. It peaked at 24 million viewers, y'all. Like, most watched basketball game. That's college or pro. Like this is a that there were more people that watched Iowa South Carolina than watched the NBA Finals in the last five years. Absolutely astonishing. The real question is, can they sustain it, or was this just a superstar Caitlin Clark phenomenon? Uh, we'll find out in short order. What a boost! Uh, what what great theater as well. Okay, let me knock on our final break of the show. Otter Locks tell us who he's got in the championship game next. It's AFR. AFR. We're brought to you by Clegg's Nursery. Y'all, spring is here. This was a beautiful weather weekend. My goodness, if you spent any time outdoors. So many people. I love it. It's just your neighbors are cutting their grass. They're in their, their gardens, their flower beds. People are outside. They're walking. It's just you see humans again. <laughs> We've come out of hibernation. It's a great time to just get in the garden and plant something. Get by and see our friends over at Clegg's Nursery. Take advantage of this weather, y'all. Get in the yard. Clegg's has everything you need. New shipments of plants arriving daily. Uh, it is a great opportunity. Listen, they've got bulk and bag soil and mulch. If you need that, they got you covered over at Clegg's Nursery. If you want decorative items for your, gar for your garden, if it's garden flags, if it's your outdoor mats, your doormats, tuned wind chimes, bird feeders, hummingbird feeders. They got everything you need. Just go see them today at Clegg's Nursery. 
Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. RAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. RAC, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you, our mobile banking. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Down the stretch, we come final segment here on a Monday edition of AFR, presented by Relief Windows. One thing left to do, find out what we're betting on tonight. Time for Auto Locks. Auto Locks, presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. While I take a swig of my ever more natural artesian water. I remind you that uh, it's time to find out what we're betting on tonight. So we turn to the one and only, the incomparable, the often incomprehensible, the Oddfather himself, Jimmy Ott. Otter, how was spring break? Oh, <laughs> we survived. Glad we to survived. hear it. It's good. No, no casualties. It's all uh, all good. All good. So interesting. Uh, it's the interesting dynamics with all that. But you know, you know use a little yeah. finesse. <laughs> you know, Otter. I was thinking about it this weekend. Um, your finest season as a college basketball bettor. You have one more. You have one more at bat. Yeah, this is it, man. How are we going to cap it off tonight? Well, you know, both Hanny and I have, um, you know, have that uh, plus three fifty Big East team. Any Big East team wins. Ooh. you know the the tournament. So very nice. You know, plus three fifty. You know, this that was available going into the tournament. That's amazing. by the way. I know. It and seems obvious at, with the benefit of hindsight, but yes, UConn has been such a, a dominant champion that felt, I, I don't know, be, benefit of hindsight, obviously, but yes, that's a very, very smart play. Yeah, um, so, uh, but, um, and, and he, they won the Big East, and 
Houston got tripped up in the big, uh, the big 12 final, and Purdue lost in the semifinals in overtime in the Big Ten against Wisconsin. But I mean, they they were they were the best team this year. But still, you know, there were a lot of other teams in the Big 12. There were other teams in the Big Ten. There were a lot of teams in the SEC that were capturing a lot of the action. So, but the main reason was for UConn. Now that that's long gone. Uh, but same thing I did with um, you know the Iowa game yesterday after. Uh, South Carolina beat LSU. I took them at plus 125 to win the women. And just because I knew that they improved their weakness, you know, outside shooting against Iowa last year, um, they, they improved that. And they made those shots against LSU and they went on. But I didn't hit the middle. You know, uh, South Carolina still won comfortably. One minute but, remaining. But I did make an alternate bet line on minus 11 and a half. So although I'm middling my bet tonight, my future bet, mm-hmm. I'm taking UConn minus 11 and a half again tonight. Oh, wow. And, okay. Yeah. So on an alternate line, you know, whether it be if 10 and a half is comfortable, but up to 11 and a half, I've already got my middle down at plus eight, but I'm going to take a shot because they're just too good and they're more complete and they're more accomplished than this Purdue team. Purdue showed me a little, a little bit of nerves in uh, a couple of those games with that backcourt mm-hmm. that I thought was a little shaky. It's, it's a Tennessee game. Wow. I mean, Edie had, had to carry it against Tennessee. Purdue's the only team that can beat them. But I think he's not take care of business by double digits tonight. Wow. Alternate line laying 11 and a half with UConn. If you want to be a, a safe chicken like me, just lay the seven. Uh, <laughs> Otter, <laughs> it's a pleasure. Where are you tomorrow? Dozy Place, man, on Government Street in Mid-City. I'll, I'll, uh, if we win tonight, Otter, I'll come by and buy you a steak. Come have, on by. Have come a great night. AFR. There it is. The Extra Mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live in the north